Hello everyone, Sanchir here with more of my Guild Wars 1 slow playthrough. So, as pursuant to the discussion that I had towards the end of the stream yesterday, uh, I want to try to finish off Nightfall, uh, release my characters, uh, Imrahil and Girudo, from their uh, slow playthrough restrictions, uh, for the most part, except for the... Um, this one, because this one's fun. That's more fun with Seven Heroes. So I'm going to try to uh, get them through that. Then um, I want to, after I've kind of done that, that's when I will want to take Imrahil uh, through the remaining quests of Nightfall uh, that I have to tackle and all that sort of stuff. So we'll see how far I can get through that. We're going to start with Imrahil here uh, and try to get him through the last couple of missions. He's not far from the end. Uh, and then Girudo has a bit of catch-up to do being currently in the Gate of Desolation, so we're gonna uh, it, it's gonna have maybe a little bit of a repeat in that regard, uh, in terms of having some stuff in semi-close proximity, but I think there will be interesting things happening um, I want to make sure I'm prepared for this mission, this mission can be quite difficult, but let's go ahead and start by talking to our uh, our spirit friend here Rochor, Rochar hello mana guy, good to see you I'm not sure how the CH is supposed to be pronounced on this guy's name. It can sometimes stand in for a guttural sound, more guttural sound, and it can just sometimes be a ch sound. Rochor, Rochar. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, he says, Hello, young sun spear. What has brought you to these tortured lands? Ah, the Temple of Abaddon. Yes, I have heard of it. Perhaps I can answer your questions. Tell me about past events. The Marganite Temple of Abaddon is perhaps the only place in this realm where you can commune with the five gods. You'll need their help to defeat Abaddon, so you'll have to find the temple and pray at the shrine there. Uh, tell me about current events. Getting to the Temple of Abaddon will not be easy. You'll need to fight your way through swarms of Marganites, and worse. Rumors say that two of Abaddon's most powerful servants are chained to the temple, guarding it against attack. Good luck. Uh, some tips? One, kill the lich before using enchantments. Two, consider equipping one or more party members with skills that can knock down targets or cause blindness and other conditions that are effective against warriors. All right. Three, when you reach the temple, spread out your party. Some enemy attacks will cause massive damage to clustered groups. Um, I don't really feel like the lich does much. Okay, so this mission uh, is a very peculiar one. You're going to be... Oh, buffering issues. No. Um. Maybe it'll just fix itself? Hope you can get it working. Um. So, there's... Basically, you... This is serving as a big capstone to the previous two campaigns, and it does so in very specific ways. So, um, I want to try to make sure I'm being very like cautious in how I'm approaching stuff to try to make things work out for the best. So I guess kind of where things will end up with this. Um, some important notes: there is a the area of the effect of the area. I was going to say the area of effect, but and then I realized that's not the words I wanted to use. Uh, the effect, the, the area's effect is one that decreases the amount that healing works. So in light of that, I definitely want to make sure I'm packing some healing breeze. Uh, it just, that just seems important. What I might actually do here is rely a little bit more on henchmen uh, for offense. Here, let's just reset my party. Let's bring... Talcora and Dunkora both. And then the other thing that I really want... Oh, let me... Okay, this is where we... That sounds fine. I agree. 360p is not high enough resolution to see anything that's going on. Do I have anything like Whirling Axe or Forceful Blow? No, those would be faction skills, so of course I don't have them. I do have Wild Blow. I could do that with Milani. So, 
one of the enemies here has some pretty nasty stances that they'll use. And making sure I have some good stance removal is, seems like a good idea to me. Okay, so I might use Milani as my last hero. Uh, and then I like Odra, Eve, Erda. Um, I can just bring Sin. Sin, Sin, I don't know. However you want to pronounce her name. I, I th usually pronounce it Sin, like Cinders, because that feels like what the inspiration is. Uh, okay, I'll worry about the monks in a second, but I need to go warrior here. Hmm, I'll definitely want to go command. I want to make sure I'm using... I mean, I don't know what else I'm going to be doing entirely, but I know I want to use wild throw, and I know I want to use... We shall return if I've got it. Okay, good. Okay, um... What options do I have here? I do have Pious Renewal. Maybe I should go that direction with things. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, like that's a really nasty part, for sure. Rending Sweep. Let's go with Pious Renewal here and wild blow cuz i need stance removal um that's all i need from warrior though i think um i guess arguably tactics could have something useful defensively but normally i'd use an assassin here in this slot to be abundantly clear uh but as i currently lack that That won't be happening. Uh, resurrection Signet. And... Um... What do I want my last skill to be? Maybe something warrior-ish? Got a few attribute points to just toss in random places. Frenzied defense sounds like a bad idea. I can always just throw in distracting blow. That's reasonable. Something like this. Yeah, this seems fine. Um, And then I'm definitely going to want to make sure I have wild throw on my bar as well. Uh, I might bring there on fire. No, I'm not. I don't have their on fire. Okay, whatever. Um, I was thinking of bringing it because it would be highly effective in the situation uh, in which the enemy has uh, just used Frenzy. A Frenzy on whom? Myself? I could use Frenzy. It's not... As terrifying on a Paragon, I guess? Although, what the heck is my cancel stance? I, you never want to use Frenzy without a cancel stance, in my personal opinion. Oh, I know what I need to do. Yeah, okay. I don't get to go commands too much here. Uh, actually, let's look at Odora's bar. Um, okay, she does have Empathy. Empathy is useful. Um, okay, so let's let's focus on the monks now. So, like I said, one of the big things here is, oh man, he just does not know how to use this bar. I wish he knew how to use this bar because this bar is actually really solid if he knew how to use it. Warrior with soldier stance over Milani. Interesting. I'll give Milani a try for the moment, just because I want Irresistible Sweep and Wild Blow to be stance removal. But if we wipe, I'm sure to try it. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Um, okay, Talcora. Healing Seed's probably still really useful here. Uh, okay, what do I want to... 
I'm going to drop a remove hex. I want healing breeze because healing breeze, uh, which I have a couple copies of, goes through the um, healing reduction. So that seems pretty good to me. Um, Glimmer. These are both long recharges, so I think that's probably okay. Question mark. Um, and then what do I have for condition removal? I guess I just bring a mend ailment here in the last slot, maybe? Ah, part of me wants to bring, like, heal party, but the energy cost on that is just ridiculous, so... I think... Hmm, boy. This is one of those spots where if I had full control over things, I would definitely do stuff differently. But because I'm using partial henchmen, it really restricts my options. Hey, Salty Grease. Good to see ya. Um, day's going pretty well so far. Still really excited over the announcement yesterday of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. That is a game concept I am super all over. Okay, I'm just not going to bother trying to do inspiration magic on this guy right now. Or Divine Boon, for that matter. Uh, I'll leave the Remove Hex there. Reversal of Fortune can hang out, I guess. Reversal of Fortune is one of those skills. I do have two copies of Guardian, yes. Okay, I have three, so I'm fine. Um, using Guardian and Aegis. Hey, Fear. Good to see ya. Uh, let's see. So then I want... What I think I want is I think I want Shield of Regen. And I have two copies of Glyph of Lesser. Yeah. So I'm going to go Glyph of Lesser on both of them to help offset some of the energy costs. And I'll leave Remove Hex here. I need at least some Hex removal. Um... And then, I guess the last one will just be another copy of Mend Ailment. I'm fine with that. I have at least two, right? Yeah. It's so, like, this isn't so much a strict, like, healing bar as it is, like, uh... But, I mean, this is... I'm leaning Shield of Regen for some of the healing stuff. What I kind of want to do... Yeah, because I do really want We Shall Return... But I'd also really like motivation stuff. And I don't... But I don't want a week we shall return. That's awkward. Maybe I just put on stand your ground. Don't worry about it too much. Uh... Hmm... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How do I want for my elite? I don't necessarily feel like I need the run speed buffs here so much as I just want to make sure I'm getting through this okay. Um. Pensavanthem has some merit. We are largely casters. Let's go with Defensive Anthem. Um, man, I'd really like to have some healing from motivation, but I guess I don't need this up at the moment. Let's just go to the larger in-game screen. Yeah, okay, and never surrender. This this feels reasonable. I don't know if this is going to be adequate to get through this mission or not. Uh, if things fail, we'll try to identify the point of failure and uh, and attempt again. That's how this goes. This is 
like I fully expect this to be easier on Giru though, just because I don't have to worry as much about what I'm doing for other things, because um, I can do the uh, wild strike on Giru though, and that's just going to simplify a lot of things. This is a very dangerous mission though. Uh, so the runic oracle here says, contacting the five gods will be a great challenge. Long have they abandoned this place. To enter the temple and call them, you will have to defeat two of Abaddon's greatest generals that command a large number of Marganites. Well, we need to get to that temple. If you are truly ready, you can begin your assault. We are ready. Well, here goes. This may go poorly. Oh, and be prepared to hear a lot of Pice Renewal. Vermeer says, The Temple of the Six Gods lies just beyond this chasm. We must reach the temple and try to commune with the gods. This may be the key to defeating Abaddon. And tread carefully. A powerful evil surrounds and pervades this place. Yeah, I've got a bunch of defensive effects to cycle between. You don't need Abaddon's favor. I can really just use Stand Your Ground on Recharge. It keeps it up. I have near 100% uptime with it, so... I don't need to, like, try to space it out with other effects. And it will add a lot of additional durability to my party. I do have to be careful about which enemy I'm targeting here because I need to be directing my heroes. Energy seems to be doing okay currently, so that's good. Um, this is part of why I bring Eve. Eve is blood ritual. Uh, so that really helps. Takora. Why was Takora standing still? Probably because she was casting a Signet of Devotion. Signet of Devotion is a great skill. But it does have its slownesses. If it seems like I'm going overboard with, like, defensive stuff, uh, the ending of this mission can certainly warrant it. Okay. There goes my three inventory slots. Let's, uh, salvage a few things here before continuing on any further. Good. I was expecting to get dust from it, and I got dust. Very excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's too much defense to the point where you don't have enough offense, but yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Whoa. I usually try to uh, do the bonus or masters, or whatever you want to call it. I keep having my hand offset when trying to respond to Mana Guy in the guild chat. And his Titans. So we'll talk about it when we get closer. I like I have to get to the point where it's relevant, but Mend Ailment is not my preferred cleansing thing. I mean that's fair. Why is that piece of ground rolling me and not letting me walk over it? Um you can go either way here. There's a branch at 
really does not matter. I'm just going this way because I felt like it. I've gone straight before too. I don't know if one of them is better or not. Or anything like that. The real challenge here in this first part is just making sure you uh, don't get overwhelmed by random stuff leading up to things that matter more. Oh, Madness Titans are annoying. Okay, Zunkoro and Tafora's energy are being pressed a lot more at this point. And then they get a big respite uh, once the Pain Titan's down, so that's nice. Oh man, his Titans are annoying. Madness Titans' uh, insistence on blocking everything is just a huge irritation. I feel like I normally go straight here and then kind of curve back around. Again, it doesn't really matter um, too terribly much which way you go here. Format Claws can be really painful if you're not paying attention to them. I recommend paying attention to them. They kind of catch you unawares and that can be hugely damaging. Because their slash does a lot of damage, but just one by itself is not a huge, huge issue at all. Mage Hunter Smash. So I think of this mission as kind of coming in three parts. Uh, we're seeing part one right now. That's kind of what I consider as the lead up. And then following the uh, the lead up is the rifts section, and then comes the boss battles. Each one has like the the first part here is pretty easy, relatively speaking. Um, you should be able to just kind of get through these enemies without too much difficulty. I'm good. Odora, I think, managed to stop that. Okay, we, we're taking some extra pain here because we had uh, side aggro where multiple groups came in at the same time. It was not great. And is apparently causing us to die a lot. I don't know what's up with Tafora constantly being dead, but here we are. Over aggro is the real killer in these areas, so I prefer to stop doing it. Okay. Let's get these torment creatures down. I don't want to accidentally get them low, but not dead. That's the worst. Uh, again, the area effect is Depths of Madness. All healing spells and skills heal for 15% less health. I think there might be some weird nuances in that. There's, like, differences between um, gain health and heal, for example. I don't know if how that interacts with some of that stuff. That's why I went for some health regeneration focus with Healing Breeze and Shield of Regeneration. 
Because I'm pretty sure health regeneration gets around that uh, decrease. So. I wish... I wish I could at least see where things were with henchman energy and stuff. Like, you know it would be nice? If I called out my energy and the henchmen would call out their energy and things like that. This is one of those spots where it's easy to get, like, a hit from a Torment Claw just because it's kind of doing something. Um, some sites of Chaos do pop up here as well. So just be prepared for that. These things are kind of nasty, actually. I'm realizing. Yeah, here's another one of those sides. Oh, here's the other sides. I was mentioning. I like to come into my back line. Cosmic difficulty. Oh, okay. And we've got a blade of corruption coming in from the rear. I really would prefer you to leave you alone. I mean, if you're attacking me, that's that's fine. Is it just these guys? Okay, it's not a big deal then. This door does open, actually. Uh, if you go up here, you can see Shiro Tagachi is over there. So... You are fools to come here. What can mere mortals do against the power of a god? No matter. Your journey ends here. My Shirokin shall welcome you to this holy place and entomb you within its walls. And this gate also opens. I did not know this, but that gate also opens. So here we are. You can go this way instead. Is this better than the other way? I don't know. I'll leave that to your judgment. But the fact that this opens is something that I want to show off because I didn't know it. Even if it's not the most exciting thing. Might be a little bit useful at times anyway. Some more Shirokin. That Richless is a particular note to me. I want to make sure the Spirit of Restoration goes down. Because I really don't need it causing problems. Spirits of Restoration resurrect everything when they die. These enemies are just copy and pasted from factions, but... This is a copy-paste for me that works really well, because it feels like it has some narrative weight to it. So this kind of gets us through the first half, uh, or the first third or whatever, where we go from the entrance down here. You could also go this way, I suppose, or you could go over here and around. Uh, now we have the Undead Lich speaking to us. It says, You may well be impressed with yourselves to have made it this far, but do not expect me to be as friendly as that Canthan bodyguard. Your presence is an affront to this temple's Marganite worshippers. You shall be greeted with open claws and show no remorse in their house. In the unlikely event that you survive their wrath, I shall be waiting. So, uh, this is how this kind of works as a capstone to the previous games. This is the rift section. Uh, this is the, the, what I consider the next sort of major section. It can be quite challenging. Uh, these portal, ri portal rates are not a huge deal. They're actually pretty fragile. Um... But they will spawn enemies from these rifts, and it's very easy to get overwhelmed here. There's a lot of patrols. You have to be very careful here. Uh, and yeah, the boss for this area is both the Undead Lich and Shiro Tagachi at the same time. Shiro is by far the more dangerous of the two. Uh, the Undead Lich just kind of wands you for a lot of damage, and maybe has some other skills that do things. But overall has never struck me as being particularly dangerous. 
On the other hand, the uh, Shiro Togachi is more or less the same uh, and can absolutely blow you up if you're not careful. His damage, basically, Shiro's damage is extremely ignorable if you ignore him. If you do not ignore him, his damage will absolutely curb stomp you. So you have to be very careful. This is why I wanted stance removal in the form of Wild Blow and Irresistible Sweep. Um, this is also why Mana Guy was suggesting uh, the Warrior Tactics stance that um, gives you 75% chance to block that you can keep up like 100% of the time, uh, depending upon your tactics investment, obviously. Uh, that's an elite skill that is very useful uh, and would help with tanking. I would normally go with like Flashing Blades and Wild Strike Assassin, which is what I'm planning on doing uh, on Giru though when I play him in this area and why I think things will be a little bit easier on him. Uh, but... Anyway... Portal rates are what need to go down. There we go. Whenever you close one of those rifts, it like gives you morale boost and stuff. Um, there are a bunch of random like enemies in here as well, and by random I mean things like Armageddon Lord is just wandering around for no obvious reason. Uh, I like it. But just be aware that this this guy is here being a doof. Uh, and just and just be a little careful. Armageddon lords by themselves are not that bad. It it is, however, a uh, thing that will like break off into a risen ashen hulk and all that. So just, just be aware of that. And uh, watch your aggro. That's really all I can say about this mission. This mission is, is an exercise to just make sure you watch your aggro. Shadow of Fear. Uh, there's... Yeah, you can't use your Lightbringer skills on the Armageddon Lord because it's a copy and paste from Hell's Precipice. It's not a demonic servant of Abaddon. It's a random... Whatever. Titan. Technically, it should be Demonic Servant of Abaddon, but... This is not... Some of those things are not, like... That's not how these this map works. Um, looks like we've got one more Portal Wraith. Take out... Milani may aggro some stuff here, so I want to keep an eye out for that. Eruption will not be good for Milani. Okay. Yeah, of course you use lightning reflexes. But that's why Milani has a bunch of stance removal. Okay, um, we've cleared out part of this. We just need to be careful in clearing as we clear out the rest of it. Again, part of the issue that happens here is there's a bunch of patrols, and you have to be careful to not get overwhelmed by them. I want to go intercept this group. No, Abaddon's favor's already going over there. Okay, let's just get this guy out of our back line then, and then we can take care of it. Another advantage of bringing her to is she does have ward against melee. That'll help in the later portion here. And these portals do spawn enemies, so just be aware of that. As you can see, a couple of Marganites popped out. Okay, and we took down that portal, so. Uh, 
I want to keep salvaging things. Ooh, some leather from that. Excellent. Okay. This last one, again, the, the real important thing here is just pay attention. Be careful. Uh, be careful about your, your uh, pulling. It's really easy to over aggro here, and you just want to avoid doing that. Okay, let's try to take these things out. Yeah, this is one of those spots where we are over aggroing. And again, I it, the enemies bunching up is actually quite useful here, just because Sinha and Herda both have a bunch of area of effect. And being able to leverage that is very useful. Yeah, this will help protect us against the Madness Titans. These have the same recharge? They do. That explains why they're syncing up. Guys are next to each other. Let's try to take them down. Monks are actually doing pretty well here. I'm pleased by that. All right. Just about cleared this last remnants of those titans out. Now we have a portal wraith and a torment claw. Your goal here is just to close the portals. You don't have to kill. Uh, like if if all you did was kill the portal wraiths, you'd be fine. Um, I believe people use this play this section to farm. For uh, there we go, and that opens the gate here at the end. So I don't have to worry about killing those guys. I can just leave them be. Um, but I believe people use this this area to farm uh, Legendary Survivor with the right hero set up and stuff. You can go AFK apparently and it'll just because it keeps spawning dudes it'll kind of do them. Okay, so before we get to this section, uh, a couple notes. Let's just bring up the mission map here. Um, so if you look at over here on the left side, I'll zoom in a little bit. There is here's the entrance. We're coming down in here. Right in here is where Shiro and the Lich hang out, but they will follow us around to an extent. They they have a little bit of a boundary. There are... There's a an Abaddon Shrine over here that we will ignore. It doesn't mean anything, but we want to make sure we skip it. There are five shrines, one for each of the gods, around the edge. The Master's Reward is to basically do one of those, like... You know those meters where you drain it, and then you fill it on your side? You want to get it all the way up to be able to, like attuned to the deity. Theoretically, this makes it easier because you get a bunch of buffs when you do that. So, like, when we... We have to kill a bunch of Marganite rangers that are here at the Melandry Shrine, and then we can uh, fill it up. And when we fill it up, we get access to some buffs, uh, some some bonus effects. the Basically, the blessing effects that you'd get if you went to, like, a statue of Melandry when we had favor, and you kneeled at it, and you gave it a bunch of gold. But basically, get those buffs. We'd get one... We'd get, like several sets of buffs for each one of these that we visit. This does make your party a lot stronger. However, you're also going to be getting harassed by Shiro and the Lich the entire time, and you have to run back and forth through them. You're trying to kind of ignore them. It can be a real pain in the rear end to actually get through this successfully, uh, taking all of those things down. So there is a thing that you can do technically when you open the gate. Uh, you don't go far enough to make Shiro and the Lich's AI active uh, and you just flag your heroes to each of these shrines using the the mission map I've never done that but uh, you can do that and then it it won't aggro like Shudo and the literally remain kind of like allied to you I think they start off allied and then become enemy um, 
so you can just run your heroes in, capture each one of these with little harassment issue, uh, and do it that way. That's sort of the like easy way of doing it. Like I said, I've never really done it that way, but that is, I understand is the way that people do it. We'll see how this goes. Um, this spot might have been good to have like fall back and incoming for just to help break aggro. Uh, this is an area where I do highly recommend using flags. Yeah, they start off allied to us. The Lich says, did the Morganite swear you out? No. Good. We hope you might have some strength left for us. You cannot stop Nightfall. Abaddon shall rule the world as the one and only true god. Uh, so you do want to come up here and kind of get back here a bit to try to break aggro with, uh, with stuff. Um... And for the most part, you want to try to ignore Shido. He will run around causing problems, but if, if, as long as you don't do too much to him, he tends to not do a whole lot. Uh, the Lich is... Ba basically doesn't do anything. He's just there. He just wands really hard. So here's the master's reward is to rally all of the deities. I'm gonna throw this on to help defend us. So you see we've done one of them. It might be useful to have the mission map up just that way you know where to ignore. Uh, and r again, run speed buffs can be useful here to help break aggro with uh, Shido and the Lich. I uh, want to drop Defensive Anthem once we start trying to leave. Okay. Now we want to go to this next one. So Shido gets a lot of damage when you attack him, and he get he starts he basically has a stance uh, battle scars that makes him reflect the damage you deal back. Like it sets his attack damage to life steal of that amount or whatever. Um, and so it's a good idea to uh, to counteract that. Drop this. Again, we just need to take out the Marganites defending this place. Uh, and then get the Wayne activation. So the Lich, for the most part, tends to just chill in the middle and leave you alone. So you can see I'm getting a bunch of buffs up here, by the way. Things like you attack 10% faster and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, make sure you don't accidentally wander in the Abaddon Shrine. It will disappoint you. This is where having all of my Paragon defensive stuff is really helpful. And again, run speed buffs would be quite handy as well, but... It looks like we found the Necromancer one. Again... The ideal is to try to ignore Shido here as much as you can. It's going to be a little tricky. Okay, I just want to go to the last one. Right, there's, oh, there's one more lock left. Okay, they can go that way. Okay, why the heck am I being obstructed here? I'm gonna bring my dudes back. Let's just give some defense for a moment. There we 
There we go. Uh, Milani, Milani, Milani. Did you have to go and do that? Whatever. We'll get her back up later. I do want them to be around this thing so we can... Uh, actually be activating it. But okay, we've rallied the five gods. Uh, okay, I want to go and get Milani resurrected. So the Lich has some nasty stuff he theoretically does with like this hunger of the Lich thing. But for the most part, he just doesn't do much. He's not especially threatening. He is not a Demonic Servant of Abaddon for some reason. You'd think he would be, but he is not. Uh, so let's just take him down. Okay, now we just need to take down Shiro Tagachi, and this guy is the one that's a real, real right problem. You want to end Battle Scars. It's a stance for seven seconds. He does stuff. Uh, and it, especially when he... I'm going to flag my heroes around a little bit. Actually, Milani doesn't need a flag. She's just going to follow him. But we want to spread out here, so that way when he goes into his like final attack everybody stage, it's ineffective. <laughs> Or less effective. Uh, I'm actually gonna flag one of those dudes up that way. Yeah, impossible odds is absolutely ridiculous. And you really don't want your dudes bunched up while he's doing it, if you can help it. Ooh, 106 gold coins. Well, there we go. That went really smoothly. beseech you hear our prayers we have come where living men should not be we have fought armies crossed wastelands and conquered demons now we are in the heart of torment we must destroy abaddon before he destroys the world but we cannot battle him alone you are not alone the gods are always watching watching we need your help we are only mortals, and challenge a god. There was a time when the gods walked the earth. Every thought and achievement was a gift of the gods. But now you must realize that our gifts are within you. Duena lives in your compassion. Balthazar in your strength. Melandru dwells in your harmony. Grenth in your justice. And in your inspiration, Lyssa is there. The divinity is within you. And so we give you our blessing. That should suffice for the task ahead. And to you, Cormir, a most special gift. This is your world now. This is your decision. You must make a choice that a mortal could make. Our decision? They leave us some words of encouragement and expect us to fight a god? The gods said we have a choice. A choice that only a mortal could make. Yes. Yes, there is a choice. We can end this. We don't have to be driven by gods and their avatars. Let us go. I feel really happy about how that went, by the way. That that can go so wrong in so many ways. Hmm. It's hard to know what they did and didn't do, quite frankly. 
We are, by the way, very nearly at the end of things here uh, with Nightfall. This is the last mission. So let's go visit our merchant. Let's read some town description, eh? Depths of Madness, by the way, leads back out into the map we were just in. For anybody who did not know. Uh, and this is a, a really cool detail as well. If you come over here, you can... I mean, you've got you've got your, your waterfalls kind of flowing around this thing. But you can look out, and there is the Sunsphere Great Hall. If you look out through there, you can see it. So that's clearly Abaddon targeting the Sun Spears with this, I think. Or at least that that's how it reads to me. Uh, and you also just... Aren't there some waterfalls around here that go vertical? Why did I think there were vertical waterfalls? Or like, er, waterfalls that go up, not just down. Uh, but yeah, so Depths of Madness is a map that way. There's also this map over here that Keeper Shafos is guarding. Uh, we'll read the description for the outpost in a moment. I do like that they went this direction after having Abaddon's mouth be the volcano, by the way. This is no place for mortals. I'll be on my way. We'll eventually be able to come there. Uh, but not for a little bit yet. So, yeah. Our quest is pointing in that direction. So, Abaddon's Gate. The unimaginable torture and loneliness to which the five gods abandoned their dark sibling lies within Abaddon's Gate. He strains against his chains, and his anguish resounds throughout the realm of torment twisting and mutilating the minds and souls of all who venture near. So, um, we already read the Gate of Madness one last time. There is a, an additional cutscene that we have here. It does not automatically play. Uh, but if we talk to Keeper Sharish, I believe, we, yeah, we can watch it. You would be wise to leave this place, human. It is not safe for your kind. Rally your heroes. Simple little cutscene here. That they chose to just not automatically show you. Abaddon abides within. His power is that of a god. And his madness threatens to destroy everything. No matter what happens, remember one thing. We never fight alone. It's a good plan. Barish's madness ends here. Never fought a god before. There's a first time for everything. Ready whenever you are. Cormir, are you ready? Yes, I think so. Lead on. I will follow. That's a big moment, actually, of Cormir basically like acknowledging us as the follower of, or as the leader of the Sun Spears now. And there's Abaddon doing his best Andros impression. So yeah, if, if you remember in Prophecies, we have Abaddon's mouth. Uh, is the volcano. Okay. A um, few things. So this mission is very different from the previous one. Uh, tends to be much shorter, much quicker. Frankly, easier, in my opinion. Uh, Dunbury here will t give us a little bit of information. Uh, hi, good friends. I'm told you're planning to face Abaddon himself and throw yourselves on the danger that confronts us all. How brave you are. If there is any way I can help, just ask. Tell me about past events. Uh, the situation is grim. The five gods have given you their blessing to your quest, but that will not make it any easier. Everything now hinges on your victory in this next battle. May the five preserve you. Uh, tell me about current events. Abaddon's physical form is chained to pillars of stone. He will fight you with all his power, but those chains were forged by Balthazar and cannot be broken easily. You will need to activate the stone statues to resecure Abaddon and then find a way to defeat him. I will pray for you, friend. Uh, please give me some tips. One, to defeat Abaddon, watch his head to see where he's attacking. When he breaks out of his chains, move up the hill until he's done summoning monoliths. 
Two, destroy the monoliths to bind Abaddon into his vulnerable state. That basically is just telling you how to do the mission. Um, I want more hex removal than what I've currently got on my team. So let's let's grab um, you know what? Let's grab Garaz here. Let's see. Do I want to bring Milani? I definitely don't need Shield of Regen. Uh, so what do I want? So some of the things that you're going to face here, you're going to face a lot of days spam. Uh, and I'm kind of internally debating what I want to bring in response to that. I think I might just switch him over to Zealous Benediction, actually. This will be a good, strong, targeted heal. Mend Ailment will be useful to an extent. Remove Hex will be good. Um... Yeah, Martyr is definitely a strong option. I think I have I have two copies. It is an elite spell. Um, I'm actually strongly considering just bringing Cautery Signet. Because this does not vulnerable to days. Um, okay. I don't really feel like I need Healing Breeze here. And I definitely want Remove Hex more than meant ailment because I, I can bring other stuff to help deal with conditions. Like I said, Cautery Signet is something. Basically, I'm trying to debate if I want to bring Cautery Signet or if I want to bring... Um, I don't actually want to bring Lightbringer's Gaze here. I'll explain why in a moment. But I'm trying to debate if I want to bring Cautery Signet or if I want to bring... Uh, it's just a Flesh Wound because it's just a Flesh Wound also helps. There's no sort of effect in the area, by the way. So, that's useful to be aware of. Um, let's see, what do I want for the last skill here? I could go with Heal Party. That's not a, the worst idea. Aegis is not really that important here either. Oh, I do have two copies of Aegis. Um... I'll put on Words of Comfort, I think, instead of Aegis. I don't need the energy cost of Aegis, and I think this is fine. Guardian's the only prop prayer. I'm just going to drop Guardian off of her. I don't think it matters that much. And I can get a little bit more Divine Favor that way, which will boost a few other things. Maybe I just put uh, Divine Intervention. It probably won't come up, but that feels reasonable to me. Yeah, we'll roll something like this for her. Again, her main focus is more on, like, glimmering people up and heal partying. Um, this feels all right to me. I don't think I need Milani. I'm going to kick her. What would I rather have? I'd rather have, like, Zed Shadowhoof on Searing Flames, frankly. Ah, you have a lot of energy storage, my friend. Uh, what, what else do I have in the elements list, actually? I do have Searing Flames. Okay, let's... drop the Earth Magic. I'm okay with him using Death Pack Signet here. Uh, but I'm going to lower that a good bit. So, uh, except I took Sin out of my party. Let's kick Herda for Sin. I know Herda's been with us a lot of the time here, but I'd rather bring a couple of, like, Searing Flames here. Searing Flames, Glowing Gaze, uh, Firestorm... Meteor, Immolate, Fireball. Do I have... Oh. Oh, I see. Well, that's a complication, I suppose. Maybe this Glowing Gaze will help well enough. 
what I'm looking at right here is I just don't have um, fire attunement for some reason. I just never, never got it in my random allotment of things. So I kind of rely on glowing gaze for a lot of energy management. Excuse me. In this case, I might actually just go with this as the bar. Because I just don't need Zed to do a whole lot here. Uh, maybe I'll slap on Meteor because it's good damage and has long recharge. But, yeah, I, I just literally do not need him doing a whole lot. So sticking to just a searing flames here is probably fine. Um, that might look a little weird, but I kind of feel like that's probably all I really need. I'll bring Never Surrender if I'm going this direction. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Cautery Signet. Stand your ground. Stand your ground doesn't feel super useful here. Uh, I could bring Lightbringer's Gaze. Or Lightbringer's Signet, I mean. So, most of the enemies, like, Lightbringer's Gaze works on Abaddon, but it's mostly Graven Monoliths that we'll be fighting here, quite frankly. And in that scenario, there's just not much use that you can get out of um, Yeah, you just can't get much use out of uh, uh Lightbringer's Gaze, because a lot of the enemies are just, they're not considered Demonic Servants of Abaddon, so they just don't trigger it. Um, fallback will help move us around. I think I'm going to just roll with something like this for myself. Uh, and yeah. See how this goes. Basically. I think this should be okay. Um... I'm concerned about Zed's energy. That, again, is why I'm just not giving him more spells. I want him to just focus on Searing Flames and, like, using Glowing Gaze on recharge. Because at 16 energy storage, this is going to net him, like, 8 energy every time he uses it, which will help offset Searing Flames some. And then Eve will help some as well. Okay. Uh, let's go see about trying to finish this thing, shall we? I am excited. So there is an Easter egg here, by the way. You can dance in front of Abaddon, and he will kill you. I, I will go ahead and show that the first time, just because I think it's kind of fun to show, but I won't be doing it again today. Uh, you'd be wise to leave this place. Human, it is not safe for your kind, says Keeper Sharish. Sharish? I don't know. I don't know. How am I supposed to pronounce it when it's an SSH? That's a type of socket or something, isn't it? We are going to face Abaddon. If you truly wish to challenge the Fallen One, I will not stop you, but I do not recommend it. We are ready. Destroy the monoliths. Uh, the grave monoliths to power the chains of Abaddon. So, there's Abaddon... This bridge, uh, Cormier says, All our efforts and sacrifices have brought us to this point. Now is the time for heroes. Prepare yourselves. Today, we end this nightmare once and for all. Remember, we fight together, and not just for our own lives, but for the life of every man, woman, and child in Ilona. For all the people of the world. We cannot fail. We shall not fail. March forth to victory, Sunspears. For Easton, for Ilona, for the five true gods. Uh, this asset is from the uh, Ring of Fire. It's a Mersat bridge. Let's just come up here and let's, let's just dance. So uh, this will set it in motion. Abaddon's thing goes down. He does a little bit of the warrior dance. And then... You got served right up here. So that's the Easter egg. Uh, I just figured I'd just go ahead and show it off. Somebody had fun implementing that.
Okay, we are ready. Far fewer dialogues and factions makes you go through, which is nice. So what happens here is Cormier does like an emote and joins you, and as you kind of go on, she has a speech. But I think we ran, because of fallback, we ran through some of the dialogue triggers a little bit quickly. Uh, but she's just going to say the same thing she said earlier, so. I do think this Mersat bridge visually fits really well here. So what we have is you can see Abaddon's head is right there. He has got some glowing lights going from it. His hands are there. Uh, so we have these glowing energy red chain things. There's a couple of graven monoliths at each spot. This is uh, a very typical fight of this sort of nature. You have to kill the... Uh, oh, this is, there's... Um, I think that might be the Sunspear Great Hall, isn't it? I haven't really looked around on this side. Um, but anyway. So... As you get closer, his hands break out of the restraints, uh, and his head breaks out of the restraints. Just to show you the state they're trying to get it in. Uh, and Torment Claws will pop up, but otherwise there's very little of note. Uh, we need to kill these Graven Monoliths. That will release the um, like energy things, kind of like the Blasphemy had inside of it. Uh, and doing that will chain his limbs in place. Yeah, and there's a Torment Claw. It's usually a good idea to do something about those. Uh, and then we just need to take out these Graven Monoliths here. Get some dramatic music. And then we can fight Abaddon. So Abaddon counts as Demonic Servant of Abaddon. And he has this effect that will, like, knock you down and stuff. So we just need to pump some damage at him. Yeah, Zed's energy is terrible. I knew it would be. It's all right. And we just need to rinse and repeat that uh, several times. That's that's really how this goes. You just need to rinse, repeat, taking out the Graven Monoliths. Wow, okay, what happened to my back line? But no, like seriously, what happened to my back line? Well, I'm on fire for freaking ever. So if you do not take out the hands, both hands first, he will free his head if you take out those Graven Monoliths. So you do have to make sure you're taking those down. Oh, I see. Uh, my claws are being a problem. It's not actually... On the days, days omatic. So, like, it can be a little tricky in that regard. And everybody getting knocked down and dazed is not ideal. But. This is a spot where being able to. Refresh pottery signal more quickly would be nice. This would be a spot where Plague Sending would be really nice. Just send all of the burning from my pottery signal over at Abaddon. This party's damage is not as good as it needs to be. Okay, I'm going to intentionally flag my dudes over here just to kind of Put them back a little bit. 
There's no reason to fight these monoliths until you've figured out the other set. This fight can be a little repetitive. Meanwhile, Abaddon's throwing out some damage stuff. We just need to take out this Grave of Monolith. And then we can attack Abaddon again. Looks like we're doing about... I'd say... 25%. To him each cycle. Maybe not quite as much as that. I don't know. And then yeah, we just have to take out these great monoliths again, etc. etc. Oh, I'm going to be burning forever. How much conditions I just sweep from my party? Hey, I got a good point. That's nice. Yeah, I just wanted him to focus on Searing Flames because I realized I didn't have Fire Attunement. I think I'd probably go Air on him if I needed, if for some reason we fail out here and I need to, like, just repeat. Because they ain't working as well as I'd like, if I'm being blunt about it. It's not like he needs to do anything other than Searing Flames and try to recover energy from more Searing Flames, so... Whatever at Abaddon. It feels like it's supposed to be kind of a Nintendo like boss. You can definitely decrease the cycles on this, though, by being more effective at damage than I'm being. Which, to be clear, being more effective at damage than I'm being is not a high task to get. Like, it's pretty easy <laughs> to be doing more damage than I am. I feel like my damage is being kind of bad. But plenty of morale boosts. So, you'll. It's very easy to get your rust sigs recharged here, is what I'm saying. I do think Abaddon takes some damage each, each time he like knock you down as well. It's not purely off of your attack damage. He has a lot of HP though. Zed, you've managed to recover so much energy. I think one more cycle will do it. A lot of degen going on right now. That's fine. Oh, 
Where are you, Garaz? Do you need to worry about these torment claws? They hurt, as you can just, as you can tell. That was a torment slash that I let get off. Well, that's just rude. There we go. Abaddon? No. His power, his knowledge, but not him. His will is broken. There is a new god of secrets. There is a new day. Nightfall has come and gone. I have much to do. Much must be repaired. This will take you home, or to wherever you desire. Cormir, if you need help... Yes. Yes, I will. But for the moment, you have your world back. The gods spoke the truth. It is your world. Use it wisely. Of course. And remember, my friend, you never fight alone. There we go. Could definitely have done that faster. And that brings us to the uh, end screen. Our party gets separated from us, I guess. Uh, I think a lot of these guys have very little to say, but... My sacred charge is finished! I can lay down my burn at last, all because of this brave soul. At last, Abaddon is defeated, and the souls of the Nightmare Realm are free. It looks like they kind of repeat themselves. Greetings, brave one. I'm here to aid you. You have but to ask. Yeah, I imagine they all have the same dialogue. You stopped Nightfall. You saved us all. You are a true hero. You can see why I say that this kind of feels like a culmination. Um, I'll talk about it some more at the end here. Uh, May the spirit of the ancient gods smile upon you, human, this day and for always. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. Uh, and ha now we have the statue of Cormier. Uh, with the, I guess it's like a Tome of Secrets or something. And this looks like a fallen bit of Abaddon's armor that she's conquered to me. This is kind of a neat area, though. Uh, and then we have the talking to everybody thing. With Abaddon gone, my spirit can finally be at peace. And here we have Sin, Menlo, Aiden, Devona, and Eve. Stop for a moment, Imre Hill Argentum. Inhale the air of your victory. On this day, you have done something greater than mortal men. You have ended the insanity of a god. And created a new god, something that has not happened since ancient times. I can't imagine what would have happened to Alona if you hadn't been here, Imrahil Argentum. 
I can. It mostly revolves around fire and pain and cities filled with zombies. That's enough, Sin. Actually, Sin, I thought it was rather delightful. That E says Eve. She would like the zombies. Ilona has a chance at a new life. That is more than we mortals are given. Cormier's new divinity is a blessing. Those she loves will be forever safe. I wish I could be so fortunate. We should head back to Ascalon. Peace is boring. Well, you, ain't, you are heading that way some. Ilona still has trouble, Sin. They still need heroes, but I think Imrahil Argentum can handle it from here. Ilona is right. The future of Ilona is in your hands, Imrahil Argentum. Come, my friends. Let us return home. So yeah, there's a lot of different things to talk about here. Uh, interesting that they're playing some music I associate with pre-steering right now. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about with regards to this ending, uh, regards to some of the stuff that happens. I, I think I'll talk about them after kind of like the final cutscene that we'll be getting in a moment. Um, there's a bunch of stuff to focus on here, so I'm going to just do that. Uh, Sin says, Good job, hero. I heard the elders are planning a statue of you and Commodon. Minlo says, Your courage is inspirational. May Balthazar bless you for what you have done in these lands, hero. Very generic because it could be a foreigner as well as a local and all sorts of stuff. Eve says, Well, well, well. If it isn't, the conquering hero. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Hello, Devona. I can't believe you confronted a god and won. I've never heard anything like it. And Aiden says, Melander has clearly blessed your path. Well done. Again, more of the generic joy souls who probably all say the same thing. Of like, uh, yeah, with Abaddon gone, my spirit can finally be at peace. Here we have the Nightfall henchmen. So those those guys here uh, were the, had the core set that's basically followed you everywhere from Ascalon to uh, Cantha now here, and we will see them later as well. But we have the... Uh, these henchmen minus Kim. I don't know where Kim is. I don't see her anywhere. I don't know if these guys actually have... Okay. All of this end-of-the-world business has made me realize what's really important in life. Family. I'll journey to Tyria and join my sister, Uridine. Perhaps I can help her in her work. Thank you, Hero, for everything. Uridine says, Oh, thank Duena, that's over. Nothing personal. You did a great job. But all I want right now is a glass of sweet tea and a three-year-long nap or something like that. Uh... The trumpets and Vabi sound your victory, and all of Yasan rejoices at your safe return. This is the day of your destiny, the day when you stand among heroes and kings, and know that you are their equal. This is the moment, my friend. Something, something. It's it's really hard to read them when they just have, like, a pop-up text like that. Um, Odura says, There you are, a brilliant hero and still looking fabulous. It could have been worse, I suppose, says Herda. Sagalon says, At last, you take your place among legends, like me. And Gera says, the wind speaks of your victory. All Ilona whispers your name. Yeah, I don't know where Kim is. The other monk henchman. Has she just forgotten about or something? I feel like she should be here with these guys. Or maybe up with Koss. Uh, so here we have the heroes section. Which is part of why they boot all of the henchmen and heroes out of your party. Ahai, my friend. We have traveled the whole continent together and even fought a god. I bet now you're grateful that you took me along with you. You couldn't have done it without a little cost. That's true. You were mandatory in places. Uh, and Milani says, I believe that Melander's hand guided me to your side. Through you, Istan and its people were saved. Thank you for all that you have done. <laughs> cost the boss. It was my honor to fight by your side, old friend. Varish is defeated, says Milani, and Abaddon destroyed. This is a great day for Ilona. More joyous souls. I'm still really kind of perplexed by the pre-steering music. Here we are. So here uh, is a couple of other important things. Uh, we'll get to it in a second. Dancora says, although the journey has been long, it was successful thanks to you. Even Cormir was never as competent a student as you. I'm honored to have shown you the way. Uh, with a roar and a mighty blow, you felled Abaddon. Your tale will be told among our tribes to the... I mean, my friend, I will see to it, even if I have to set a fire to the storyteller. Uh, all right, all right. 
Uh, they're going to build a statue of you and Commandant. You know, 20 feet high and built like, um, I don't know. They, they had some dialogue that I missed because it like, I don't know. Can I re-trigger it if I come back here? Yeah, probably not. Uh, Zed Shadowhoof says, Victory! Master of Whispers says, The Order of Whispers is indebted to you for all that you have done. Ilona does not know the full extent of your actions. We do. So, uh, you'll notice these guys have exclamation marks. There's a couple choices we made. We could have picked Acolyte Jin or Acolyte Sasuke. We could have picked Margaret the Sight or Master of Whispers. Here, you get quests to recruit them to your team uh, if you chose the other one. So we'll be doing that, grabbing those quests in a second. Then Cora says, I never could have planned for this day, but all the same, I'm glad to see it. Hello, Acolyte Jin. I told you once before, there is no danger so great that a courageous heart cannot overcome it. Hey, Margaret. Heck of an operation you have here, friend. I've heard about your band of freebooters, and I'm here to sign up. Make a change in my life and all that. Besides, I've heard there's gold to be made, and I'm a dab hand when it comes to cold cash money. Of course, someone's going to have to tell my old mates I'm not coming back. If you're willing, I'm willing. So, ready to take on another crew member? I don't trust Corsairs, but I sense you'll be as loyal as gold, so to speak. I'll go tell your crew. Hey, Waruda. Good to see you. Um... So we're kind of coming up to, like, the end, by which I mean I'm beating Abaddon and collecting a bunch of quests. So there's going to be a bunch of questing, uh, but I'm going to be releasing this guy from most of the exclamation point run restrictions uh, shortly here. So that's exciting. Actually, what I'm probably going to do is collect a bunch of quests, talk about the ending, and then see about trying to get Gerudo Senso up to this point. Um, <laughs> that's probably what's going to be happening here. Uh, so there's the quest for gaining Margaret. She says, You beat Abaddon and ruin a 50 gold wager. Best bet I ever lost. Acolyte Sasuke here says, You're the one I've been searching for. I'm glad I found you. General Hayao wanted news of your travels to carry back to Kantha. I volunteered for the job. I know you've been through a lot, but I think I can help you in the future. While you're making the, your report, do you mind asking General Hayao if I can join your service? I know he'd let me if you ask personally. You seem a useful fellow. The fire, the explosions, the valiant fights. It's a tale of heroes, and you're the greatest one. I am not doing Domain of Anguish as part of this playthrough. Uh, I'd be happy to do DOA on stream with somebody who knows what the heck they're doing um, at some point in time, but definitely not today. Uh, I've done D Domain of Anguish exactly all of once at this point, somewhat recently, thanks to people in the Spud Club here. Um... But I don't know it well enough to do it with heroes by myself. So I certainly would not do it with the restrictions I've been playing under either. And here's Salkora, Gorn, and Morgu, the Vobians. Are you really going to travel the world with us, Talcora? I thought when all this was over, you'd head back home to be a princess. I'm not cut out to be a princess. Besides, a lot of people out here need heroes. Now that I really am one, I'm going to do my best for them. We'd be, we'd be ever so very happy to have you along, dear maiden. But are you certain of this decision? The world is a very big place, and you're a very small girl, after all. I'm sure. This is what's right for me. I can feel it. The world is calling my name, and I'm not afraid to answer. Not anymore. I'm glad, Talcora. But don't forget about Vobby. It'll be waiting to welcome you home someday. DOA is really rough if you're not prepared for it. It's still rough if you are. We did it. We really did it. I can't believe it. We're, we're heroes. Hey, Gorin. A high hero. I want to be just like you. Hey, Norgu. I remember you from Vabi, yes? That's precisely what I thought. I'm writing a play about your adventures called Norgu's Nightfall. To write it, though, I need to hear the real stories. I'd like to join your troop, interview you, and get the real story for my play. But first, you'll need to go and you'll need to go sign an agreement in Honor Hill so I can write it without worrying about silly things like, oh, royalties? Will you do that? Of course I'll sign away my rights. This is for posterity, right? <laughs> no way, I know how this works. I sign, and three months from now, I'm played by a guy in a gorilla suit. Uh, that was maybe an unfortunate choice of phrase, but 
we'll ignore it. The streets of Vabi will overflow with celebration, Emir Hill Argentum. Greetings, brave one. I am here to aid you, etc. They all say the same thing. And then we have Zenmai, Elias, and General Morgan. When I served Korna, you were my enemy. They say a man is defined by the enemies he chooses. I can think of no better way to be remembered than as the soldier that served by your side. Not a general, not a commander, just your friends. Uh, and Zenmai and Elias had things to say too, but I missed them, but that's why I took some screenshots. For Lators. Elias says, By Grant's blessing, you succeeded where another would have failed. Remember his part in all this, hero, and praise him even as you are praised. Zenmai says, In Kantha, we bow very low to heroes and to emperors. That is the way I will bow to you. General Morgan says, Lissa must have heard my prayers. Corn is saved and my dishonor is forgiven. Praise the six gods. I think it's the first one to say to refer to the six gods now. Uh, so we will talk more about Cormier joining the Pantheon later. Players had feelings about that, shall we say. Uh, may the spirit of the ancient gods smile upon this day, etc. Greetings, brave one. I'm here to aid you. You have but to ask. Okay, so a couple of things first. There's a couple of crafters here. There's a Keeper of Arms, which will make half skill recharge versions of equipment. I don't really have a particular need for that. Um, plus 1% chance on skill usage equipment, though. That's kind of interesting. I never really use these sorts of mods. Might be fun to sometime. Just occasionally get things boosted a little bit. Oh. And some plus 15 energy staves. Uh, this stuff you can make other ways. Uh, it's not a special skin or anything, which I find peculiar. Uh, the Keeper of Armor will make primeval armor if you want primeval armor. I could buy a piece. I'm not going to. I'm not going to click on it to accidentally buy a piece. Uh, but, you know, this is where you make primeval armor. There's primeval armor for each profession, I believe. So that's kind of cool, including assassin and ritualist. Uh, and we're getting the credits for ArenaNet with the executive producers of Mike O'Brien, Jeff Strain, and Patrick Wyatt. Uh, James Finney, there's Isaiah Cartwright, a bunch of, bunch of people scroll up the screen now. The Keeper of Secrets here uh, says, You've done that which even the five gods were unable to do. For that, you shall be rewarded. Please, take this book of secrets. Present it to any of the keepers you see here, and they will reward you. Just a traditional thing. Uh, book of Secrets is a book of secrets. So we have... Keeper of Shadows. Uh, that makes assassin stuff. Ah, the conquering hero who slew Abaddon. Your name will become legend in this world and beyond. It would be my honor to create my finest art for you. Please, allow me this courtesy. Before I can create my masterpiece, I must have materials. If you bring me one book of secrets, I will fashion for you a creation the, likes, the like of which this world has never known. Uh, so, like, there's some zealous daggers and some zealous daggers and some zealous daggers. They just have... Zealous Daggers in three different skins. Talons, uh, Ungus, and Split Chakrams. Th these are all identical for some reason. I don't know why they didn't make them different. Um, Keeper of Steel. You can get a Forgotten Axe. Sword. Uh, hammer. And then a couple shields. I don't know why the Keeper of Arms doesn't make inscribable versions of this, these skins that they present here, by the way. Like, why can't you just craft Ungus? Uh, like inscribable unused or inscribable forgotten these these are all sundering by the way which is deeply uninteresting to me um i believe people might like some of the shields that you can make here just because they're against specific elements uh and then there's like the staves these all kind of follow the same model so this is half skill recharge of spells uh insightful with an energy it's a plus 20 energy staff basically um and then a plus five energy thing. I don't really care about these. They don't have focuses either for some reason. Uh, there's a couple of different bows. There's the Forgotten Flat Bow, which is Zealous. The Forgotten Horn Bow, which is Vampiric. Uh, I have this on a couple of my rangers, actually. It's This is generally what you want for a Horn Bow. Uh, long Bow is Sundering. Again, the most boring mod. Um, recurve is Cripple Duration, which is very useful for uh, Crip Shot. You want a recurve bow with cripple duration usually for that because you want to extend the duration of the cripple effect off of crippling shot. Uh, so this is actually a very useful setup. 
Uh, and then the short bow is bleed duration for some reason. I usually don't care about extending bleed duration. This is the one that I'd prefer to be zealous. Uh, if I could get zealous forgotten short bows, I'd be all over it. And again, if I could craft these skins, I, I don't know why they don't have a crafter for those. They do in um, the ending... Let's see. I know at least at the ending of Prophecies, with the ending thing that they added there, you can craft these special skins that you can get as greens, as golds. Uh, and there's there's some other spots, too, with some of that, but I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, Keeper of Light. Again, this is like monk stuff. Uh, or... No, yeah, this is monk stuff. Uh, oh, they do have different dialogue. Oh, let's, let's see. Keeper of Steel. I am the Keeper of Steel, once a mighty lord among my people, now softened into this form that you see. Time and age wear upon us as well as on you, fragile human, but your strength is great. Perhaps for you, I can remember my ancient craft just one last time. Bring me a book of secrets. Once, many lifetimes before humans came to Alona, I was a priest of the ancient gods. Now, my power is a little more than broken prayers and fallen dreams. Even so, I believe that I still have enough magic in my soul to repay you for all the things that you have done. The ancient gods. That's interesting. Before humans came to Elona. I wonder to what he refers. Nature's will sings... Nature's will still sings in my veins with the change of the seasons and the running of streams. It has been many years since a hero of your stature walked these paths. Come, let me help you in the name of the Ancient Ones. If you present me with one book of secrets, I'll give you one of these in return. Ah, yes. I'm sorry. I did not see you coming. I am blind, you see. My eyes were seared in the light of the first sun. Though my sight is clouded, my magic is strong. I can help you on your path. If you bring me a book of secrets, I'll craft an ancient magic for you. One, I think, that will show you what I cannot. I mean, they're fine. They're uninteresting to me, though, largely. Beneath the skin of the world are its secrets, the bones that hold aloft the weight of all things. You walk upon the body and breathe of the world. Can you not feel it? Here, I will show you the truth. Bring me a book of secrets, and I shall give you something crafted from the very bones of the truth beneath this world. Keeper of Spirits. This would be ritualist stuff. But again, it's the same sort of thing that all the casters get. Greetings, hero. There are whispers that you have already walked among the spirits and survived. If this is true, then you have done more than even the greatest champions of the ancient days. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. If you can find me a book of secrets, I will call upon the spirits to light your path and grant you a gift in return. Keeper of Illusion. Laugh, my friend, for in your actions you have at last seen behind the mask. How many can say that they have seen the true face of truth? Bring to me one book of secrets, and I will celebrate your great victory with another glimpse at that which lies beyond the veil. Keeper of Scythe. Scythe. Not scythes, but scythe. I have never been fond of humans, despite our ancient purpose. But you, ah yes, you have earned more than acclaim. You have earned respect. Therefore, I'll help you where I would not ordinarily lift a finger for your kind. Bring me a book of secrets, and I will create for you a gift that will rival the treasures of kings. So here you can get a zealous scythe, uh, a sundering scythe, or a vampiric scythe. I prefer the ones you can get at the end of Eye of the North, uh, skins-wise. Hand of the Forgotten is kind of an interesting look. It's like a hand holding a dagger. A hand holding a dagger, which is kind of cool. But, um, I mean, we're not getting any of those. We're, we're not using a scythe here. We're a paragon. And then Keeper of Spirit. Learning human ways is difficult. You, your kind are strange, fake creatures. I'm glad that your actions saved your people, and mine. It gives me more time to study you, to understand your purpose in this great cosmic dance, as well as our own. Here, let me help you. Bring me a book of secrets, so that I can craft something for you that will n forever remind you that our people, humans and forgotten, are forever linked. So here you can get a lightning or versus fire damage shield. Um, this motivation shield might be useful in Eye of the North, but I ain't making it. Uh, so, at least, yeah, that's not exactly what I want either, but, hmm. So you have Courage of the Forgotten, which is a Sundering Spear. You have Prayer of the Forgotten, which is a plus five energy. 
Adrenaline Spear, which is not really what I want. And then you have Spirit of the Forgotten, which is a plus five energy enchanting spear. Um, this one is popular on casters because it gives you plus five energy. Uh, it in boosts enchantment duration. You don't care about the fact that it deals lightning damage. And it's range, which is really handy. I might get Spirit of the Forgotten here as well. Um, on this guy. Because I think there's a better uh, Adrenaline Spear at the end of Prophecies. This guy's going to go there eventually. I don't really care about these shields. The skin is really nice, but I'm going to go ahead and get a Spirit of the Forgotten, I think. There we go. Uh, let's just sidle this over here. Obviously, I'm not going to turn this in yet. I have three missions left to do on this character. We'll do them in the future. Uh, and there's one more cutscene, so we're going to go see that. Uh, and then I'm going to talk some about uh, some of the other things So related to this. How courageous, says Volatus. How stalwart you are. Ah, but you must be ready for home and hearth. It is time for you to return to the lands you know. Are you ready to leave this place? If you are, then my sacred wind magic can take you wherever you need to go. Can you take me to Commodon? Of course. Let me know when you are ready. I am ready. This is a cutscene, by the way. It mirrors the opening, which I think is really cool. Ilona, land of the golden sun. A land of wealth and bounty. A land of heroes. A land protected by its champions. A shadow fell upon this land once. The shadow of an ancient and forgotten darkness. Night fell, and the time of the five gods ended. Yet after every night comes a new dawn of a new day, and a time for new heroes. In Ilona, the land of the golden sun. Okay. Uh, I really like the presence of that cutscene. I think it does a really nice job of wrapping up the end of the game. Um... And that's something that I really appreciate. So I I really like that. Um, the other campaigns do not have an ending cutscene like that. And I also really like the way that it mirrors the opening, but where we get differences. Like, I think it was done Koro in a scene similar to the one Morgan was just in. Uh, we, we'd have to go back and check the footage or whatever, but we could do that. Uh, if you really care, you, you can do that. Um, so... The ending there. Uh, as Managai pointed out, it ignores... At that point, it kind of ignores the fact that Cormier kind of started the whole thing or precipitated it. That did get discussed in the Gate of Pain mission, where a character is basically like, you're not at entirely at fault here, Cormier. Uh, Abaddon's been working to free himself for centuries, basically like a millennium or more. And uh, she's like, okay, I even if you don't, like blame me entirely if you're saying that I was manipulated against my will. It's still my responsibility because I did take those actions. Uh, and I feel that her trying to do that is trying to end things, doing what she can to guide us and help us through all of this stuff at the end there in the Realm of Torment. Um, this is one of those things that's really tricky, though. So a lot of players were upset that Cormier was the one who got to uh, succeed Abaddon, uh, that she took on his power. The problem is there's no practical way for the player characters to, to take that on. Um, so, like, I understand... from a, as, as somebody who's worked in game design stuff myself, and as somebody who's thought about storytelling and all that sort of stuff, I'm completely sympathetic to where Arena came from. Uh, as a player, I do understand why players were upset that why can't my character be the one that gets to be the new god and is all cool like that? Um... It doesn't really fit with what you're trying to do in the game, though, if the player character kind of ascends to that position. I will add as well um, 
that like I I kind of feel like this this game works as a really nice sort of bookend to a sort of a trilogy. Uh, we see the Lich Lord and Shiro Tagachi both being there um, at the end. It's implied that... So let, let's kind of talk about that some. I think we'll see some more details about that in some of the missions that are upcoming. But... Uh, or some of the quests that, that we'll, we'll be doing in a bit. Uh, potentially another day, but that we'll be doing. The... Uh, the Lich, it's implied Vizier Kilbron read a scroll that was like Abaddon's or from Abaddon. And that's kind of how he ended up in that position. And then Abaddon's like, hey, you want power? You're power hungry. Um, Shiro Tagachi, similarly, we will see some stuff about the fortune teller being a demon of Abaddon manipulating him. That'll be coming up in a quest as far as I understand it. Uh, so we'll see some of that stuff as well. Um, but it's all in the in some of that stuff it it feels like it's a nice wrap up to the prophecies and factions stories that this kind of serves as like the a part that ties them together as a, a trilogy um i like that i think this is something that we're talking about a little bit earlier uh or i, I, I was discussing in, in a previous stream uh more to clarify more I feel like if I were in charge of making Guild Wars at this point, I would be like, okay. Like, granted, they took a particular route with it where they decided to go off to a sequel. But if I were to continue to be making Guild Wars 1, I'd be like, okay, let's branch off to, like, a new place entirely. Um, and, and let's just kind of reinvent ourselves in kind of a block system, kind of like Magic that the Gathering has done. And that's the approach that I would take uh, with, like, passing through the mists to get to new places. We're like, okay, now Cormier can give us passage or something like that. I don't know quite how you'd want to do it long term, but I feel like something in that direction would kind of work out a little bit better. Uh, as for what I plan for the rest of today's stream, well, Imrahil Argentum at this point, as far as I'm concerned, he's not going to be participating in any more of the slow playthroughs directly. Um, yeah, like like Guild Wars Utopia. Passing through the mists. Exactly. There you go. Um, so, because he's not going to be doing any more slow of the like stuff i i really want to open up because i think it'll be a lot more fun for me to open him up from the stuff that i'm using with the uh, s some of the run restrictions i still really like these restrictions right here uh and working with this this has been a lot of fun and i like this so we're gonna keep that up for Immer Hill. but at this point i'm gonna give him access to account stuff uh so that's gonna start with uh with a personal vault we're going to do this quest now. Uh, yes, I would like to access my Shunlai and give me my material storage. No, give me my crafting material storage. There we go. Hooray! So, with this, I can now finally clear out so much stuff in my inventory, I don't even know where to begin talking about that. Uh... So we're going to take a moment to deposit some materials. Oh, man, that's a lot of additional. Okay, uh, and I'm full up on wood over here. And I'm full up on chitin as well. Okay, and I have an extra thing of steel. I kind of want to get another thing of steel floating around. Oh, and I have some feathers here. And some more dyes. Oop, let's aim this properly. Uh, man, just, just that alone has just opened up so much space. It's crazy. And extremely welcome. Okay, I need to also turn in these Drake kebabs. And I'm going to need to, like past these snowman summoners off to people. Um, while I'm over here, though, because they happen to just stick me right next to, the, n right next to these guys, uh, I'm going to talk to Darius Tenderlin and Funwa Shento because I want to get access to other maps. So let's, let's look at what these quests are about. Darius Tenderlin says, Sunspear, I have a great favor to ask of you. 
Our home has suffered relentless attacks from vicious hordes of undead, and I have been sent to recruit any who can help us defeat this foe. Now, the Sunspears are renowned across the world for their bravery, skill in battle, and selfless nature. I beg of you to consider leaving Ilona and help us in our time of need. Menlo, another emissary from the lands to the north, can further apprise you of the situation if you are willing to help us. He is at the consulate docks. I'll go speak with Men I'll go speak to Menlo at the consulate docks. And Funwashento here says, I've traveled here from Kantha with some bad news, I'm afraid. There are rumors of a plague spreading across our land. Sickness and death have infested Kantha, leaving the people terrified. I have come to find those willing to help save our empire. If you would help our your neighbors in their time of need, please speak with Menlo. He can tell you more about the situation and arrange for your travel. Are you willing to help Kantha? And I will speak with Menlo at Consulate Docks. Yeah, time travel quests, indeed. Indeed. I just wanted to pick those up while I was literally right next to the guy. Okay, so Imrahil has been released from most of his restrictions. I can go turn in this quest to open a personal vault. Uh, what's the other thing for him in the crier? Yes, you can you can say it. You're allowed. Hey, wonderful! You have activated your storage account. I think you'll find that having an account with the Shunlight is very beneficial. As a special bonus for opening an account with us, we have a small gift for you. Thank you for using our services. We will protect your items with our lives. Uh oh, another support support bonus. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab this from Benda. Did you feel the earthquake? A giant hole has appeared in the cliffs behind Comedon. I must inspect this crevasse. Who knows? Corsairs may be using underground tunnels for illegal trafficking. It would be foolhardy for me to go down alone, but you seem the sort who's willing to take on the challenge, am I right? Wait, you've heard that line before? A hero does what a hero must. <laughs> hole of Istan. That's really funny to me for some reason. Uh, I got a Spear of the Forgotten, or Spirit of the Forgotten, the um, the energy enchanting spear. I figure it'll be useful for some of the other stuff I'll do on other characters. Oh yeah, I also need to go talk to the chef. Also, I've opened up this guy's sh uh, access to sh the Shun Life for this guy. Mostly, I'm just depositing things like crazy, but the scale fins have an important purpose as well. Uh, was it you? Yeah, it is good of a cast part of a caster shield set. Was it you, Childu Mana Guy, who wanted the Marganite masks? Who was it? Who wanted them? Yes, Drake Kebabs. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and put those in there. Understandable. If you don't want them, that's fine. Oh, man. Look at this beautiful... Beautiful opening up of uh, storage space. Oh, man. It feels really good to open up a bunch of... Or a bunch of uh, space here. Okay, so now what I want to do is drop this guy off in consulate docks. Um, let's actually get the quests over here from Dinja as well. Uh, finally, I'll get to see the world. I've been stuck in the, for Anistan for long enough. Chasing Zenmai. Linro, an Imperial Guardsman Cormira met during her trip to Kantha, sent a missive about an assassin named Zenmai. Apparently, the Spear Marshal had asked Linro to keep his eyes open for any potential recruits. If you ask me, he's just trying to pawn his problems off on us. He saw the assassin in Kainang Center, apparently looking suspicious, but we can't afford to be picky, so I need you to go check out the check out this assassin. She might come in handy if things get any uglier around here. A cold, refreshing assassin? 
I sure could use one of those right about now. And all for one, and one for justice. Word just came in from Tyria. Lion Guard Figo in Lion's Arch sent a message to Cormira regarding some necromancer she met during her travels abroad. It appears this necromancer, Olias, has gotten himself into some trouble. The Sunspears need you to go in Cormira's place and find out what's going on with Elias. Can you help out one of our friends from across the sea? He sounds like he could be a super friend. Okay, uh, and Menlo will take us to other regions. I'm not going to do that just yet on this guy, however, because right now I am going to switch back to Gerudo Senso and work him through uh, these things. So, first thing I need to do is change which one of these I have I am using. So let's go ahead and just make sure Imrahil is saved. I don't think I changed anything, but still. And then open the league for uh, Girudo. And now we have a different set of skills because Girudo has a different set of skills. Okay. So, uh, Girudo here is just trying to get through the campaign more or less at this point. Um, I have with him... Let's see. So we got to the point of needing to do the Gate of Desolation mission. Uh, I don't think there are any unique quests at this point hanging around for the different heroes. Uh, I think I've kind of taken care of all of those. So, I kind of want to just end this little playthrough for him as well, but that's going to require me to get through some stuff. So, uh, Man, this guy Zed is so much better equipped because I picked Acolyte Sasuke, so I got more shots at Elementalist skills. I think it would be best if I skip the pet here. The simple truth is that uh, this mission is not going to be pet friendly. So I'm going to have to go out on the sulfur. We're going to just have to leave the pet uh, behind while I deal with that stuff. Let's see, let's just go into these. Um, I am going to want... Pet can't die from sulfur. Well, that's convenient. But I still kind of think it wouldn't go so great outside of a worm. Um, yeah, I bet a lot of things are weird for them in this mission. Okay, so I'm going to bring a slightly different combo here. Because I really want myself some wild strike. They go into worms in this mission, but don't use skills. That's bizarre. Critical agility. I don't think there's anything that I need to capture here, so I'm not going to worry about any of that. Um, it might actually be a good idea to spec a little into something. Wow, that's a lot of worms. That's some serious wormage. I'm going to assume I don't need critical strikes here, and I'm going to just bring Horns of the Ox and Lift Enchantment. This is a skill, not a spell. So this combo should allow me to be able to deal with some stuff better. We shall see. Okay, um... Clearly, I'm set up to bring both Kim and uh, Sin, Herda, and Menlo. Let's go with this group, maybe. Yeah, let's go with this group. Let's see how this goes. Okay, a laugh along main. Well, let's just uh, let's go. I do generally still want to try to get Masters in these. Uh, getting Masters is extremely beneficial. Uh, thankfully, I have a f run fast General Morgan, which is pretty great. And I'm going to be able to run a Searing Flames team to some extent here, because Zed can chill out on Searing Flames. And um, Sin is Searing Flames. 
this is one of those spots where this character has to take this a little bit more cautiously than I had to take it on uh, Imrahil. Because Imrahil had the deep misfortune, or had the deep fortune of being a ranged character, whereas this character is melee. And therefore, prone out to uh, what's the words I'm looking for? This character is prone to. Um, oh my goodness, my inventory is so full on this character. To dragging his heroes and stuff into the uh, sulfur and wiping very badly. So I'm just going to leave them kind of flagged up here. Try to avoid that happening. Sometimes words fail you when you're speaking. Yeah, these guys use soldier stance, which is why I wanted to go with a combo that allows me to be able to break stances. I get ridiculous attributes here. 19 Dagger Mastery is crazy strong. Get out of here, Waking Cavalier. Churka, how do you feel about getting knocked down and then having your enchantment removed? I don't need you using nonsense as well. Oh, I'm getting so wrecked by freaking quicksand. Apparently, I've completed Ijandu's first challenge. Well, I poked her a bunch and she didn't like it. These carvers use Vow of Silence, which is why I brought the Horns of the Ox Lift Enchantment combo. I really, really like some of the I, some of the Dwarven Boxing skills specifically on Assassin, though, so I'm looking forward to getting them on this guy. Again, we'll be going through it fairly quickly because I did most of the quests on Imrahil, so this will be kind of an exercise And okay, but what is this like if you're not trying to do everything? Oh, this is a boss. Like, why is this guy taking so long to kill? Quicksand is super obnoxious. Get back here. I see you awakened head, you ain't getting away from me. And again, being able to strip enchantments from these guys is extremely useful, although it does take those things recharging. Yeah, you don't need as many attribute points. It allows them to suddenly be made vulnerable to the casters. Palawa Joko says that we're impressive. That surely is meaningful. I'd like to not be knocked down for ages, but here we are. A bit light on hex removal is my team.
I'm actually unpleasant. Would you stop living up to your name, please? There we go. We've done what is necessary to tame the sands. And now we can be in worms. Hooray. Then they need to teach us that we can't always be in a worm. Don't be silly. Again, we don't actually need to follow Palawa Joko here. So I'm not going to. What I'm apparently going to do is get all of my skills mage beam shotted. Like to eat one of you, please. Or whatever. I'm stabilizing a little bit. This guy definitely has a lot less Lightbringer track than uh, Emerald Argentum. Turns out doing all those quests really gets your Lightbringer title track up. Now all I have to do is hop out of the worm. Again, they're teaching you here about the limitations. I do have some overall thoughts about Nightfall. Uh, but I will want to review my notes to kind of make sure I'm getting all the things. Uh, I Overall, there's a lot of things Nightfall does that I really like. But it definitely, this format in particular had some problems. Um, the big issue is Nightfall's just, if you're doing all the quests, it's extremely long. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that you're playing in a way that's fun. And particularly on Imrahil, that could get, get a bit long in the tooth at points, which is why I wanted to break him out of the uh, slow playthrough before finishing off the other quests. We're going to be getting a lot of skills on him soon, by the way. Uh, Paula Wajoko wants us to go that way. I don't care for going that way. I want to go this way. better attack speed when critical agility is going off. Also, when I have the Shadow Thief theft buff, it really dramatically increases my uh, amount of uh, Du dual attacks because of increasing my dagger mastery. That's fun. Another stack of iron ingots. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with all this iron. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, monks. I'm overstressing you, and I apologize. Yeah, it does. I'll probably be selling... Well, the thing is I want to get some expensive armor on some of my characters as well. Arden's in particular. I might hang on to it for the moment and see how much I need to eat up with that. I might see about converting some of it to steel, just have more steel lying around as well. Oh 
my goodness. The amount of, like, debuffs that were going on there was ridiculous. I had so many hexes on me. What I'm looking for right now is Warlocks. Uh, I don't see any, so I'm just going to toss a couple of enchantments on myself. Warlocks have corrupt enchantments, so... That's causing me some of my issues. That's what it was, it's the baby worm. No, I just use your tactics. Glad I didn't shadow step somewhere un actually unpleasant. Yikes. Hey, Kyrados one Welcome. Uh, I am taking the second character that I was doing this little playthrough with for the different branches through towards the end of the game. That is what is up. Uh, let's just go ahead and get in the worms now. It's probably a good idea. If I remember correctly... So there's one there, then there's one up here, and this curves down and around, and then there's one up there. I'm trying to remember the directions on my map for stuff here. Okay, Marganites. Warlocks, you guys are really annoying. Get smushed, Marganite Ascendant. Wow, those chain lightnings hurt so much. You know, I could probably, like, back calculate based upon those figures how much armor we don't have as friggin' worms, but I ain't gonna worry about it. The Zealous mod from this is applying right now, though. So that's nice. This Kenshi's Butterfly Daggers will probably be gifted to Zenmai once I finish the campaign, because I'm probably going to pick up some Zealous Daggers from the end there. Go with my Shiro's Blades. I'd rather not fight those things, thanks. But let's talk some about some of the Nightfall stuff. So one of the things that's really impressed me with Nightfall is the sheer quantity of quests. There's been a lot more quests in Nightfall, but it's not just been quests. There's been a lot more quest chains, and that's definitely added some layers of nuance to the world. And I've really enjoyed that. Uh, some consequences of that, however, is that there's a lot more running around, like going back and forth to, to get quests and then back out and then back and forth. So it does extend things a good bit um, in that regard. So that's something that I definitely noticed. It's not necessarily a, like a bad thing or anything. It's just an observation, right? Um, and I do appreciate there being a lot more quests to do. I have felt my inventory get very burdened with these things. There's battle commendations, corn and coins, trade contracts, uh, ancient secret or like ancient artifacts inscribed secrets there's just so many of those like quest reward items i like those things but i wish they had been a bit more unified in the system because they're functionally very similar but with the big downside of just like progressively eating up more and more inventory space uh which is like it's an inconvenience not a huge deal it's just this is in no particular order right just as thoughts are coming to me um feel like with the questing, I feel a bit a bit better about uh, the differences in various zones. But overall, I do feel like Nightfall's palettes kind of center in a specific area. Um, and I wish that there was a bit more visual variety with the game. Uh, just in the aesthetics of areas. 
That's one of those things that's a little bit harder to quantify, though. Uh, the last baby to undo is over this way. I really like what they did with the uh, master system, though. I think it's a great way of taking some of the benefits of um, the bonuses. So, so let, let's talk a little bit about the other games, because this, this game is clearly going to be made uh, with the other games in mind. So in Guild Wars Prophecies, you had a bonus. It was it basically an additional objective that took place in the mission zone. Uh, when you completed it, it was done. You didn't have to go back to the zone or anything. Um, you, like, you didn't have to finish the mission in order to be able to get the bonus objective. You just had to do the bonus objective. And then you get like a thousand experience or whatever. Uh, they decided to modify that system to be the master system with Guild Wars factions. But 11 of the 13 Guild Wars factions missions, their masters was just completing it in a certain period of time. This was not terribly exciting. Uh, and, you know, it it just, it was, right? That That's really all you can say about it. It, it was. Um, and it was a lot less interesting than the bonus system. I think a lot of players preferred the, the interest of the bonus system over what the master system in factions was doing. Now, I did mention 11 of 13. There were two missions that did not do it. Uh, one of them it was the Eternal Grove, and the other was Galahantry. Uh, and those ones... Uh, like... Though that was a bit more interesting. Again, they were the same sort of thing of like, don't have the mission objective thing go too far out. Uh, but you know, it it was a little bit more interesting. So here in Nightfall, they kind of took the master system and the bonus system from Prophecies. In terms of, they took the the way that they constructed objectives and Prophecies, and kind of made it fit in with the. Uh, the master system a bit more. Uh, there's a cutscene that will be ab about to play. I'm going to go ahead and let it play through. But you can see we just got master's reward there for saving all three of the Junundu, which adds a little bit more interest to the mission. Well, well. You seem to be more capable than I thought. Given your low expectations, that would not be hard. Easy now, my little plow horse. Now, if you don't mind... I will be taking my leave. This abomination preyed on my people centuries ago. Let us return him to his tomb. It took the armies of the Osa clan to defeat me before. You think your motley band are their equal? Zed, let him go. He's dangerous. We should burn him. He gave us what we wanted. We will let him go on his way. <laughs> And that is why you, Bedrul, and your people are beasts of burden. They think things through. We've not seen the last of him. He'll be back, and we'll regret having helped him. So yeah, there's the Master's Reward. I like the way that they did Master here. Of It's kind of like the bonus, but on a thresholding system, but you have to beat the mission as well. Um, whoops, that was one too far. So I think it... I really like what they did with it. I think it was a good direction to go. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm really happy for uh, for what they did with that. Uh, how do I want to handle this? Brawlers. I think brawlers might actually have some value as well. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just go back to okay let me grab the the quest for the next part here i think it's from salajar the dead it is a very blunt name uh yes yeah, this is a deal a deal i'm not going to necessarily read all of these because we saw them on Imrahill, and i am trying to go a little bit more swiftly we'll be focusing more on primary quests and things like that uh but for right now, let me sell off these, check. First things first, I need to sell off the ironing guts. Then I can check the uh, 
the other thing. Um, but anyway, I feel like they hit a good sort of like combination spot where they still kept up the system, the the master system, as opposed to having a separate bonus that completed separately from the mission. And this was this was not that. And there's still a few timed ones as well, uh, which is fine. Let's go ahead and sell this Brawler's Insignia. I'll sell that Rusted Grieve. Tanned Hide. More Tanned Hide. Okay. Uh, and then a Merchant can take this. Because I identified it, I'm going to sell it. See how this goes. A bunch of uses left before I can get rid of this Battle Commendation in a satisfactory way. <sighs> for an ID kit, probably. You can see how those are, like, absolutely cluttering up the ever-living snot out of my thing. Um, okay, something I should check is... Nightfall... Uh, okay, we've been through Vobby, we've been through Corna. Let's see, I'm just looking for... I already have Ferocious Strike, right? Yeah, I've got a bajillion Beast Mastery things. I'm not going to be too worried about trying to get specific things that are like nice to have, but Fox's Promise I already got. I'm just scanning through a list of elite skills by location. It's very useful, actually. Uh, the Alkali Pan. I think I already have Spike Trap. Yeah, Spike Trap is one of the few skills I have here. I know that there's a bunch later. Oh, okay, that's all the way in Crystal Overlook from Aqua the Bladed. Uh, I'm probably going to want to go pick that up. So Shattering Assault is the skill that I'm looking at there. Uh, Shadow Prison from Art of the Quick, and that's here in Joko's Domain. Okay, I do want to be picking that up. And then the Ruptured Heart has... Uh, Scavenger's Focus, which is not a bad idea to pick up. Shattered Ravines has a... I kid you not, three elite skills for Ranger. I'll probably be picking those up, however, after I complete the uh, quest that takes me there. Okay, so Art of the Quick is just way over there. By the Basalt Grotto. That's actually really off the path. I'll pick it up later. Um, I'm just not going to worry about it right now, then. I'll probably pick up a lot of these later. I just don't need them right now, uh, and it'll be nice to have them, but it's, it's hardly imminently important. I kind of want... See, so Horns of the Ox is a reasonable knockdown skill, but it has the problem of requiring the enemy to be uh, not adjacent to any of its allies in order to be able to work, so it's not as reliable as I may like. Frankly, what I'd like here is I'd like the Hex that makes them knock down with them with a dual attack, but I don't have that skill on this character right now, so... Merp. Not really happening. I don't think this combo is really doing all that much that was important, though, so I'm going to just kind of drop it. I can bring Critical Eye if I want to. I think I'm going to slap in Twisting Fangs for the additional damage. And... Maybe let's just slide. Let's drop Assassin's Remedy. I don't feel like I'm really using it that much anyway, and Antidote Signet does most of what I want. Uh, and let's use Shadow Sanctuary. That seems good. Or I could just throw on Dash. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just throw on dash. Do this. That seems reasonable. This does have a 30 second recharge. But this also has a 20 second recharge and can jump me straight to wild strikes, so I don't think it should be too much of a problem. And we're going to be spending a bunch of time in worms anyway. I do like the dialogue here. 
Ah, my ever-loyal minion. Those osses never give me a moment of peace. Yes, master. Varish has placed the balance of our forces square atop your throne. We shall regain my throne, and all thanks to these well-to-do hero types. They have no choice but to destroy her vanguard and retake my palace for me. Well, hello there, well-to-do hero types. I know I'm not doing its voice at all, but it, I feel like being silly and exaggerated. Uh, hello, Palawa Joko. Uh, yeah, a deal's a deal. We read all this on Emerhill. You can... I don't know. He's talking about how his power's been weakened or something. Um... My, my priorities right now are more get Girudo through the game than anything else. This series has gone on extremely long. That's kind of what it comes down to. Uh, and I'll just feel better when I feel like, hey, I finished it on both characters that I'm ostensibly taking through here. I don't really like having weakness on me. Okay, well, whatever. That's been cleared up. I actually like the Alright Aegis skin. Also, I got a seal ingot from that, which is really nice. Okay. Into the worms. Hey, hello, mana guy. Welcome back. Is your internet treating you any better this time? I hope it is. Let's see, any other specific thoughts about Nightfall? Yeah, okay, so I was talking about how I liked their bonus system. Uh, and I really do. I, li I like the way that they changed it. Like, I feel like it's the best of both worlds. So the Master System has uh, some advantages. Um, it integrates it a bit more with the uh, mission, what you're doing. Um, it, and it, the thing that's really nice about those is it thresholds a bit. So you can give players additional partial rewards. Uh, without having to go like a full, well, you got the bonus, I guess, way. And it allows you to be able to have different levels of like challenge. Players can take a stab at it, and then players can like really do it well. Uh, and, and I think that that serves it quite nicely. Um, but unlike factions where it was all just do everything fast for the most part. This one has a lot of variety in objectives, which I feel lends nicely to like that you generally are still going for the master's reward. Let's let's not kid ourselves. Uh well, time for me to get knocked over. Um But it, it does mean that the the structure of it um or they, they've just picked objectives that are a bit more variants, uh, which I appreciate. Like the bonus system of old. But they're a bit more integrated with the mission than the bonuses often were. Like, I think of the, um, the mission in Prophecies, Divinity, no, Telesio Seaboard, where you had to, like, cart this, uh, offering of Melandra around. It felt... Like, it didn't really have anything to do specifically with what you were doing. And so it was nice to have something that was a bit more specifically about that, right? Um, that's just kind of the stuff that I'm thinking about here. Uh, so having it be... Like, there's stuff with the bonus system that I think works a bit better for the bonus system than it would with the master system. They have different strengths and weaknesses. But overall, I think the master system is, is a little bit better. Um, but I like having the different objectives. Uh, let's see. I think there's a couple of things. Oh, I need to remember to read these. Well, uh, something about his friends being undead or whatever. Um, probably one of the larger overarching issues that I have with Nightfall. Um, and this occurs with its quests and, and throughout kind of like a lot of what it does is it just has 
an overwhelming amount of like inconsistency tonally. Um, this is probably my biggest issue. There's a lot more quests, but there's a lot less consistency in terms of like what things mean. Man, this Spirit of Quicksand is wrecking my energy so badly. There's a great giants of jerks. I'm doing this to him because I want more dagger mastery so I can double strike more often. Um, get out of here, quicksand. Uh, let's go this way. So, like, and it's it's hard to like kind of summarize all of that. But there are there's just a lot of examples of missions that um, have very just or quests and things that just have very different tones, and so that like tonal inconsistency that's kind of throughout Nightfall, particularly some of the quests. This is this is a thing where like there's little tonal inconsistencies in the story between like Varish being super Saturday morning cartoon villain. Uh, versus, well, yeah, I want the rest of grief. Um, versus like the uh, distracted by combat here it makes it hard to like say something thought through. Um. But anyway, so like, there's there's some amount of issue that I have with the main story, but overall it does a, an okay job of carrying things through. I do wish Varish was a bit better developed. I feel like she needs to be a bit better developed, or there needs to be fewer of those meanwhile things showing what's going on with her and what her thinking is. Just because, as it is, a lot of the dialogue they've written for her just leaves her very much so, in my mind, in what I'd describe as Saturday morning cartoon villain territory. Where it seems to me that her motivations are just like lacking in like nuance uh hello general hutta flower joko is back indeed um and that lack of nuance in what her motivations are like she's just being evil for no obvious reason like it's not really clarified what why she's so attached to abaddon or what she's hoping to accomplish and i think that it suffers for that So I really wish that she had been better developed as a character. Uh, and it would have helped General Morgan be a lot stronger. It would just help the whole main story to be stronger if Varish as a character was stronger. Because so much of the story relies on her. But overall, like, I'm actually pretty okay with it. Um, it is very, like, singular goal-oriented, but I think that fits this sort of medium better than Prophecy's Wandering Story. I prefer Prophecy's Wandering Story, to be clear, um, in terms of structure. It just... it That's what I want from stuff more. But... I do think what they did with... Uh, with Nightfall here is and with factions as well, are better stories to be trying to tell in this sort of format. Because they have very limited stuff that they can work with. So. Uh, I guess I'll salvage this. It's probably not worth. I got three ironing bits. That's not bad. Okay, let's get this Grieve. Clear out these guys so I can get the worm spore. Yeah, I got the ages off. Kind of hoping that wouldn't happen, but here we are. Um, but one of the things that I feel very strongly with Nightfall is a lot of the side quests are just all over the place in tone. And there's a lot of inconsistency. And so 
ordinarily, I'd say a lot of side quests help with the world building. But I feel like a lot of them are very fluffy. Like they don't, they just don't have a lot of like meaningful depth to what's going on with them. And I also feel a lot of the side quests are, um, like they're just totally inconsistent where it, it doesn't feel like they're painting from the same palette. Uh, and so that sort of inconsistency is something that kind of really stands out to me a lot as well, where you have quests like the Drake on the Plane, um, you have sort of the, like, I don't even know where to classify the Odd Bodies quest chain. It's somewhere between, like, serious and lighthearted, but it has, like, yeah, it, like, and that's part of it, is, it's, it's a little hard to classify, and, like, I think the individual quest chains by and large are, are fine. They're great. Um, it's just the issue of like they don't all feel like they fit together super well to me. So I think that's one of the big things for me overall with a lot of the lore development and other things. Like there's so many like little cool elements. They tie so many cool things back to previous games. They do a lot of really cool stuff that way. But overall, I feel like a lot of the quest tones are a lot less consistent than they were in previous games. But, you know, it, I appreciate how many quests there are and the effort that they went into, like, making that many quests be in the, the, the game and stuff, so. There's pros and cons. This is kind of what I'm coming down to. Some stuff works well for me, some stuff less. Let's just heal up before we go fight things, shall we? Uh, there we go. I'm stuck on something. Probably like a General Hada related thing. I can take that. Is this cutscene on me? I feel like it does. Yeah, it does. The romance between Cosmo and Line doesn't really work super you well for me either. You miserable hunks of desiccated flesh! I leave you alone for a few hundred years, and you let everything go to hell! Now that I'm back, things are going to be different! Huh? Oh, Talcora. I thought you were someone else. I know. You expected Milani. Yes. You know, Telkara, you've really grown in the time I've known you. But you always thought of us as mentor and student. I know. I've always known. I don't want to hurt your feelings. As you say, I've grown. And I'd be blind not to see that you and Milani belong together. <laughs> Is it that obvious? Yes. And the sooner the both of you realize it, the easier it'll be for the rest of us. He's all yours. How much of that did you hear? Most of it. I have very good ears. I want you to know that I do care about people. Not just princes. Princes are people too. I have to remember that. And remember that I'm not always right. We do belong together, you know. You think it's that obvious? Only to the entire rest of the world, Cos. No, no, no! Mummified flesh on the left, dried bones on the right! No, you're on the right! You worthless bits of animated anatomy! So a couple of things that that cutscene actually does a really good job of highlighting. First of all, there's something implied there, which I just don't feel from the game itself, which is a sense of some sort of like Talcora is in love with Koss, and there's like, what is the relationship between Koss, Talcora, and Milani? Like, even with all the quests, I don't, I don't have a sense of what that is supposed to be. Ooh, blessed, that's nice. 
Um, there's clearly some sort of relationship. Can I? Nope. I just need to sell this Marganite mask. That's okay. I would like to salvage it for iron, but my inventory is too full for that. You might think to yourself, why don't you just drink your blue energy drink then? It's like, I could, but then I wouldn't be getting that point on another character, and I want to get that point on another character. Uh, so, like, that relationship between those guys seems like it's supposed to be pretty important. And there's supposed to be, like, clearly Talcora has had at least, if not, still has the hots for costs. They've never gotten that impression, though. Um, hmm, Bless has come down quite a bit. He was, used to be quite a bit higher. So, you know, it's just one of those things where I look at those those elements, and I'm like, but where, where did this, like, come from? Okay, Horde of Darkness, this quest sucks. There's no two ways about it. Uh, but we'll we'll get through it. So that cutscene so there's there's two things in that cutscene. First, Palawa Joko is comic relief. It really undercuts the seriousness and the danger of his character for him to be comic relief. I don't get any sort of menacing edge from him. There's some implications with some of the other quests that we've done, but my overall impression, particularly if you're playing this just through the main story and watching those cutscenes, if you are watching them, is much more comic relief oriented. The seriousness of who, who Palawa Joko is, is is deeply undercut by that, particularly some of that initial impression stuff like it's set. Um, he's clearly cunning. But he's he's very much so plays comic relief. I don't necessarily have a problem with that per se. Um, that can just be part of his cunning in some sort of meta sense. But it, I feel like the the sense of menacing edge on him was turned up a little bit louder uh, than it is. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how to approach any of that sort of thing. Palawa Joko, just as it is, is kind of. Um, to me, anyway, is a little bit more of a silly-sounding name. Not, like, laughable, but it has more of a comic ring to it. Palawa Joko sounds more like somebody who tells jokes, right, than it does someone who's a devastating undead champion. So, I don't know. Some amount of that, like, could just... I don't know. It's just one of those tonal things, right? And and I don't necessarily mind him being comic relief, but again, I feel like it, it adds some levity that's probably not bad to have in the game, but also kind of serves to like undermine the seriousness of who he is. Uh, and like like I was saying too, this costs Milani Talcora almost love triangle or something. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. I that just comes out of left field. Um, the the Milani and cost thing feels forced. I don't get where it's coming from. I've not seen their interactions or anything. I feel like there's supposed to be a lot more cut, like content somewhere that's dealing with their relationship than there is. I don't know. I, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. How how it, I don't know what things were looking like for Arena Net back in sort of the writing room area. But I really feel like there could have been a lot more uh, explanation, I guess, for lack of a better word, of their relationship and how things fit together that way. Uh, than we actually got. Because again, like, the idea of a love triangle be between, or like, Talcora being in love with Koss is something that just kind of comes out of left field to me. Uh, it, it doesn't feel set up at all. So. There's some, like, mismatched rom-com type stuff, I guess, a little bit with Koss Milani. But a lot of the cutscenes are just them bickering, and it's like, oh, they're bickering, therefore they're in love, or something. It, it, it just, it doesn't feel like it's a properly explored romance, if that makes sense. Of course, if they had done it, it'd be like, well, why can't the player romance somebody? And then you quickly fall into slippery territory of, how much do you want to do? Like, it just becomes a mess. It just becomes a really big mess, very quickly when you start dealing with that. Because then you're like, okay, what are your romance options? And, ah yes, thank you for disabling my unknown Janundu ability.
You might be like, but you're missing so much health. And it's like, yeah, but I still have way more than as a player I do. We just need to go in here into the Shattered Ravine, so I just wanted to skip through some of that. Uh, there's some cool stuff over here. We're probably not dealing with a bunch of it. Okay, let's... Oh, this is just for Marganites. Sure. Uh, I do want to come back in this zone at some point with, like, three sign signets of capture and capture a bunch of stuff. But I'm going to do that at a later point. Yeah, and there's the Royal Guards. And that's the NPC that you trade. Uh, Mark masks too for some useful gear. Where is this worm spore? Am I just there? It is. It's just over here. So I don't know. Nightfall feels really messy to me in uh, in some of that stuff. But again, I love a lot of the interlinking they do with the previous campaigns. I love the way that they try to make it feel more like a capstone. I think they succeeded a lot of that. Uh, I really wish Varish was a bit more compelling of a villain. And I feel that she personally is. I guess that's kind of a lot of my thoughts here. So. I'm gonna pull back a bit so that way I can be out of range to heal. There we go. That didn't matter that much, but I did it anyway. Let's talk a little bit about some of the mob stuff too. I feel like a lot of the enemies are decently interesting to fight. I think that... So some stuff that I think that, that Nightfall does really well as well is I feel like the overall pacing is pretty good. Um, in terms of, like, mechanical stuff. Um, specifically what I mean is I feel like the starting area is better paced than... And better designed than factions by a lot. I think that this game has the best tutorial of them in terms of, like, actually teaching you things. I've said that a couple times now. Um, but I also feel that, uh, like, the fact that you get up to level 20 and then have the point where everybody comes together, I feel like there's just a lot more, like, well-constructedness in some of the, like, order of things there. And heroes were a really good idea, particularly for the long-term health of the game. I don't know how much they're thinking about it at the time when they implemented them, but it's nevertheless proven to be true. I kind of feel like I need to do one more corn and quest to get one more corn and coin to get a another superior salvage kit. Maybe I will do that. This is one of the bosses that I'd potentially capture from, by the way. But it's kind of on the way for the other stuff that I'd want to capture anyway. Because it's in the same place we're going to now. I do find the worms to be one of those things that's like quickly outstays its welcome, or slowly outstays its welcome. It's not quick. It takes a while for the worms to get old, but they do eventually. I don't know. I feel like that's a lot of my general thoughts. Certainly the slow playthrough series has been really interesting to see the differences. Uh, Nightfall is going a lot longer than Prophecies or Factions, by the way, by like 50%. Or more. So Prophecies was 10 streams, Factions was 11, in part because I had to take, or like do a lot of the content twice, um, just to get Rex Templaris through for the Kurzik side. Uh, but this is like, what what number is this? This is a pretty high number of streams. This is like. 14 or 15? We're going to get up to probably 
because I doubt I'm going to finish all of the quests and stuff today. Um, so there's probably going to be at least one more stream of the this particular playthrough. Well, okay, this is fine. I do want to come up here afterwards because I do want to get the outpost up here. So there is a lot of... Um, a lot more stuff going on. I think one of the big things I've taken away from the slow playthrough as well is that I really wish Prophecy's pacing had been adjusted. Like, uh, several things in Prophecy's had been adjusted to kind of fit in with the idea of an additional campaign better. Um, wow. Okay, I obviously got branched by traps there. Expecting bone from that. Uh, wood. Okay, whatever. I'll just go ahead and salvage them. Iron? Okay, well, whatever. These things can all salvage different things if they want to. Um. And I do feel that factions refine some of the things, and Nightfall did a much better job of refining stuff. So I'll give ArenaNet like kudos. They were really iterating on and improving their craft with the game quite a bit with uh, each game that came out. And hopefully, like, future games, they could have figured out some of the tonal stuff a bit. Um, but they definitely, I feel, try to focus a bit more on character stories or, like, stories to specific groups, and that's part of what the quest chains did. So you had quest chains for stuff in Ronjok. You had, uh, just like, it. I feel like the quest chains went more deeply in specific things, exploring specific things, than it did in overarching lore, if that makes sense. And that just creates a very different, like, sense to stuff than if they had gone for something that was trying to, like, be more broad in big lore steps. But the other thing, too, is a lot of it feels, like, orthogonal to the main plot, if that makes sense. So, orthogonal or, or perpendicular is when things cross like this, right? Uh, they, they're at right angles. Parallel is when they're next to each other. So, kind of the way that I'm thinking here is a lot of the, like, little stories about regions feel like they are talking about something that's going on in the region, but they're not reinforcing the main story of what's happening directly anyway maybe there's some stuff of like oh evil things are happening and that kind of like reinforces it in a very broad sense but it's not specific things so in contrast in uh like quests that advance sort of the main like or reinforce the main story kind of uh are, go parallel with it i am lagging in game quite a bit here um would be stuff with like I mean, the Royal Papers eventually set up stuff. Um, so, Deep Root, Deep Root's quest line in um, in Guild Wars Prophecies. That quest line emphasizes the fight against the White Mantle, right? Which is something that has started happening. It reinforces it. Um, or some of the stuff here, actually, in Korna, with building up your base... There's a bunch of quests there that emphasize you are working to build up to be able to supply yourself to fight against the Cornans. You're, you're reinforcing your base. That works along parallel with the uh, main story. The stuff with Chuno and getting the pet, that's kind of more orthogonal. It's a little bit aligned, but it's, it's a bit more orthogonal. It, it doesn't directly have anything to do with the main story, right? Um, and then there's like a bunch of stuff with the princes that are just kind of like, this is a thing that's like happening. So, like, Amter the Mighty and helping him in his fight against the Harpies. That doesn't have anything to do with trying to defeat Abaddon. It's just, like, a side story of, like, well, here's a thing going on in the place. And, like, it elaborates on some of the stuff that's going on there, sure. And it kind of fleshes out stuff with the world. That one's maybe a little bit better than other ones that are a bit smaller. But I'm trying to think through quest chains. Or, like, stuff with Janus there. 
uh, like that that speaks about the character, but it doesn't necessarily have anything major to do with anything. It's not really expanding the lore a lot. Or another good example is the curator. Like there's some cool lore stuff there that gets dropped in it, but for the most part, it I don't know. It's like they don't necessarily feel like they have an, as much to do with the main quest, and some of them feel a bit smaller. I wish they're basically. I kind of wish that they spent the quest time a little bit more on some other things. Um, Notably, I, I wish that they had spent more time elaborating on the relationship that your heroes are supposed to supposedly have with each other. Uh, I think that would have been a good use of resources. Uh, and maybe slightly fewer, like, quests that are just like, here's a random thing in the world, I guess. Um, I would have liked that, but anyway, here we are. That's, that's probably me rambling about that enough, but... It's just something that kind of struck me, where I feel like a lot of the stories are like telling a little story in the world, and they're not really making me feel like I understand the world better or more necessarily. Um, it feels like they're giving tiny glimpses for a lot of time, rather than like bigger glimpses for smaller amounts of time. So that's kind of what it, it. That's kind of where I'm kind of resting. But again, like character stories like that are, I don't have any objection to. Uh, they can be a lot of fun. But my point is more uh, that I feel like the quests in Nightfall elaborate on the world about as much as some of the ones in Factions or Prophecies do with more quests. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up this guy's quest here uh, for Revenge. Uh, Forgotten Retribution. This quest just requires you to kill like 40 Marganites, so might as well. It's just some additional rewards for after a little bit. With the amount of Marganites we're going to need to take down here, I think it's fine. Okay, the Alkali Pan, this had something that I was looking at. What was it? Oh, it had Spike Trap from Vod the Crafty, except I already have Spike Trap, so it didn't matter. That's what it was. Cool. Uh, I needed to process some of the stuff in my inventory. I'm just going to sell, like, 30 iron here. There's a materials trader around here somewhere, yeah. Jessic. Uh, I guess you can take this wood. Iron's down a bit from where it was. Yeah, it's down quite a lot. It's down to 430. It was up to, like, a plat at one point. But that's probably better for it to be a bit down, quite frankly. Yeah, that gives me a little bit of buffer space. Oh, that superior salvage kit is almost out. I might want to go act on the thing that I was suggesting earlier. Let's go to the Sunspear Sanctuary, see if there's... Whoops, my apologies. I normally turn on priority only, but I had a notification show up because I forgot to do that. That was not your computer. That was my computer. I mean, you might have had a thing occur simultaneously, in which case it would be your computer. But anyway, I want to basically I want to be able to use these corner coins to get a replacement superior salvage kit. Uh, and I think I need five for that. And I have four. Yeah, I need five. You seem to have trouble. You seem to be having some trouble acquiring goods from legitimate channels. I'm a businessman at heart. I'll help you fight this underground warp for a price. If you bring me five corner coins, I'll give you this in return. Like, there's a lot of stuff to kind of explore with the fact that we are will willingly allying ourselves with, um... Eavesdropping? No. Okay, a little recon. It would require me to take costs with me. Which is a little inconvenient. Yeah, these are all gonna require costs. I can finish the thought I was having later. Okay, sure. I'll grab this quest. This quest will work. Um 
I'm just getting another corn and coin here. Because it is convenient to do that. Um, but I, I do wish that there has, had been more sense of development of the relationships between your heroes because I feel like that's a thing that they like imply happens but don't really elaborate on super well. I think I just need to go talk to Mirza up here, basically. If I remember this quest correctly. This quest will actually potentially be good for illustrating a point as well. Okay, whatever. Uh, got some good energy off of some of that. Just go past the raging tuka birds and stuff. Umasa merchants. But see, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. There's a bunch of quests that require you to, like, reload this zone and go talk to Mirza. And it's not, like, long. It's taken me, like, about a minute to get over towards Mirza Veldrunner here. But it's just the sort of thing where enough of these will add up to where you're just doing a lot of running back and forth uh, for these quest chains. So, you've come to aid the Centaur Prize, eh? Well, don't expect much in return. The Cornans have destroyed most of what we had, leaving us little more than the hides on our backs. Even now, corner troops plan attack against us. I wait word from scouts. Uh, and then I can get this one if I want to. I do not. I just wanted to get that set of corner coins, but... Okay, now I can go exchange those for a thing. Again, I like the system of having the ability to trade these things in. It's just the fact that there are so many different collectibles is a pain in the rear end. Bobby is too big. Um, I can kind of see that. I don't, I don't know. I'd like, I'd like to hear you elaborate on, on your thought process with that. Just because I'm curious to, to know what your thinking is and, and what led to that statement. Not saying I... No judgment on it, just curiosity. Hopefully I make that clear. It's very easy for that sort of language to sound different than I mean it to be. Complaining about the amount of quests, by the way. Yeah, if you feel like you have to do all the quests, it can definitely get feel very drawn out. Um, interesting. Okay, I think Lair of the Forgotten up here actually has a dude. There are definitely a lot of quests everywhere. And, like, I like the quest density if you don't feel like you have to do all the quests. Yeah, that quest is a pain. Sure. I will grab both of these skills. Called shots. Did you really reflect on what you're doing? The crippled foes are knocked down. Ah, tripwire doesn't seem super great to me. Like if it was just a trap that instead of dealing damage just always knocked down foes, that would be. Or like if it crippled foes that it didn't knock down, that would also be pretty nice. I don't think I really care about most of these. I'll pick up Called Shot. You never know when that can be handy for some sort of weird specific build thing. But that's more likely on Dervish or Ranger. Hello, Agnostic Absurdist. Thank you for the follow and welcome.
I can definitely get the feeling of what you're talking about. Of like, this is the thing that I'm talking about. Like, the quests are not all the same quality, right? There's a lot of inconsistency and a lot of like, but why though, with some of those. Um, some are interesting. Some quest chains are more interesting than others. It's just extremely variant. Uh, and just because there's a lot more, you kind of feel that in a way that stands out at times. Okay. Ghostly Priest. Okay, you just want me to fight elemental creatures. I've read this one before. It's the ones for the undead creatures that I haven't. Like, if you're doing all the quests, you will absolutely be uh, Castellan by the point you get out here. Hmm. Yeah, see, this is one of the things with Vobby, is you do have to do a lot of running around to get to all the quests. I definitely felt that. Whereas, like, you have to go, like, yeah. There's so much running around. And that's the thing. That's the thing that I was talking about. With all the quest chains, there's just so much running back and forth to be able to, like, finish a part and then get the next part and then finish a part and get the next part. You can't bundle stuff together where you're like, oh, I do this quest in this area, uh, like, three quests in this area so that I, I can, like, bundle things together better. It's like, nope. You do this one and then this one. It's just so much running back and forth. Um, that makes things feel artificially drawn out. It's like they're trying to make the number of quests they're having, like, fill the maximum amount of time. Um... I don't necessarily think that's the best way to go about doing things. Let's switch to my short bow. So that way I can kind of stay at a distance here with these guys. The Horde of Darkness quest. This is probably my least favorite primary quest in the game. It's just so tedious. This one's probably one of those quests, though, that plays a lot better if you have a bunch of humans that are doing it, rather than all the AI doing it. Because with the AI doing it, uh, you have to, like, make them actually kill the Horde of... Because the Horde of Darkness only takes damage from Janandu Siege. Yeah, like, I'll take too many quests over, like, why are there no quests whatsoever in the Mikuma Jungle? It's not true. There's a few quests there, but it feels extremely devoid. Um, especially the Hendred and Ravi. Hendred and Ravi feels feels like a map that was supposed to be meaningful that never got a chance to be. And it's like, oh, this was supposed to have a lot of stuff going on, but just never got a chance. No. See, this is the problem. Just undo siege can't target nearby foes, so you have to back up. And then getting the AI to back up can be a royal pain in the rear end. Um, yeah, I definitely will... And I don't know if that's specifically what you meant, Mana Guy, but I'll, I'll definitely take... Uh, feeling like I'm running all over to try to do quests. Because, again, like most players are not going to be completionist about it, so it's not quite the same deal, right? So I'll definitely take running all over to try to do quests over there are no quests. Why are there no quests? It feels like there should be stuff happening here. That's that's definitely something I feel. Yeah, I kind of figured that's what you meant. Let's try to take out this horde of darkness in the middle of everything else that's going on. Like, they want to negate this behind doing things. You found your party of spear throwers handled the worm pretty well. Yeah, having them be at range would definitely help. 
No more at range, anyway. Which is why you want all those Marganite masks, right? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how that process went. It could just be coincidence, too, that just works better at that range. Okay, let's try to shoot down some more Horde of Darkness members. shoot the Horde of Darkness with our elite skill. And of course it gets lead so it goes all over the place. It's not exactly leading. It's a basically the there's projectiles in this game have a specific flight time. So this siege will be in the air for a specific period of time and then they're just like, okay, where is this going? It's a very simple vector math when you have uh, that sort of thing going on. It's a lot more complicated if you have uh, a specific speed that you're moving instead of a specific flight time. But like they kind of budget a little bit with uh, weapon arcs. So um, if your weapon, like if you're close to something, it'll arc up higher than if you're further away from something. So that kind of like hides the flight time of stuff. But yeah, if you, if you pay attention, you should be able to find some of that sort of thing going on. with the uh, the arcs. So now if I were closer when I used the siege, it would curve up more. So they can have it be in the air for a specific period of time. It's a good way of like doing it because it allows you to have a leading system that avoids the problem of leading systems. Leading, by the way, is just the idea of like something's moving, so you fire a projectile. If you fire at where it's at, while when it's moving, it, by the time the projectile gets there, it'll have passed that point, so it'll it'll miss. Uh, so you want to like judge, okay, how quickly is that thing moving? Where do I need to fire so that way my projectile will hit it when it's moving? However, that becomes a very tricky proposition depending upon like your projectile speed. So if you have a set speed for your projectile, you have to like do this really complicated math of like, okay, uh, this part's cool, of um, how far is the thing that I'm trying to to go to and uh, how fast will the distance be able to go because the thing that's going to happen is when you're leading something it's usually at an angle so instead of going straight you're going on the hypotenuse of the triangle so it takes longer and so like it's just this really 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 messy math to try to actually lead something properly um, if your projectile that you're firing has a set speed and the thing that's moving has a set speed right in your stationary obviously this can all be done like relative to each other sort of thing so uh, but what, what ends up happening with the the math because i've tried to do it before it is an absolute nightmare is you, like you have to do stuff of like okay uh where basically you, you're looking at a line and you're saying here's the line here's my speed how does that and here's this speed so how do these like vectors line up so that way, because this line gets longer the further you extend the time, right? Because and this gets further and this gets longer. So you have to, it's, it's just a whole mess. So having it be where the projectile has a set amount of time, it's in the air and a variable amount of speed makes it so that way you know exactly how long this line is, basically. And it, it, it allows you to be able to travel along. It just makes the math way, way, way simpler. Uh, and that's something that's like, oh, this is a really clever way of solving this particular problem. This is what it kind of comes down to in the end. So, yeah, that's that's that there. Uh, 
Captain Mahan talks about those blessed by Abaddon feel the chaos sweep over them. The knowledge and the secrets are enough to drive you mad. But uh, he's... Uh, I have seen its effect manifest in many different ways. Yet this madness simply strengthened my resolve to stand by General Morgan during his darkest hours. Uh, and he's like, yes, we're allying with General Morgan. Again, we saw this on Emory Hill not too terribly long ago, so I'm not dwelling on it. Uh, I'll let the cutscenes play, just as kind of a refresher, though. The Mouth of Torment. Varish's mentor, Kayat, spoke of it. It was here that the five gods defeated Abaddon. Here that the walls of his prison are the weakest. Here that Varish Asa will finish her ritual. She will turn the world into torment and unleash Abaddon into that world. Are you up for this? Yes. No. I just remember Varish as she was. She did so much for Korna. She was a good leader. She has been touched by Abaddon. We have all been touched by Abaddon. Our entire world. We must stop it now. When the time comes, you have to strike. I know. But I will strike her down. Only because I remember what she was. I will redeem her memory. That will be good enough. Alright, so that gets us through that. Pretty straightforward up to this point. Uh, let's go to Tatao and sell off this wooden longbow. Um, so the mission that we're about to do here is not too bad. This one tends to be very quick. This one's supposed to feel like it's uh, equivalent to fighting Shido at the end of uh, factions, I think, is kind of the goal. I just went to go hit dash inside the outpost, but that doesn't work. Uh, please take this with my thanks. I'd follow him to the depths of the realm of torment. If he so commanded, it is a shame Varish and Bale could not inspire that loyalty. Uh, those blessed by Abaddon feel the chaos sweep over them. The knowledge and the secrets are enough to drive you mad. I've seen its effect manifest in many different ways, yet this madness simply strengthened my resolve to stand by General Morgan during his darkest hours. Well then, uh, actually I want to check something in my list of, in fact, Mesmer skills. Uh, Mesmer is pretty good, but I don't really need one. Do I have revealed X on this character? No, it doesn't look like it. I could have ended up with revealed hex. It would be somewhere between these two if I had. Um, revealed Hex would be really useful here. Inspired Hex is a prophecy skill, so I just don't have it unlocked on this character. Or available to this character in this uh, this format yet. Uh, I'll probably want to change stuff around a good bit in terms of like what is happening when we get to a Gate of Madness. But for now... I think things are continuing to be fine. Uh, so, those blessed by Abaddon feel the chaos sweep over them. This is the general line that he has. Borilona, you have done well to pierce through Varish's rear vanguard, but that's partly due to luck. She has been in a deep trance, orchestrating a grand convocation with Abaddon. Because of this, she has not struck back with force. However, the Horde of Darkness is a sign that the bounds of the Realm of Torment are now pushing into our own. End this madness once and for all. Once you are ready, I will help you slip into the crater. Hopefully, undetected. We are ready. Okay, well, let's go fight Varish, shall we? I think we should. The Ruins of Mora. Again, I like to take out the, uh, the clerics here. So that way they can't heal on this phase or the next. Abaddon reclaims his possession. Soon true power will be revealed, and the door to his prison opened. Uh, 
Okay, those guys counted towards the Forgotten Retribution, naturally. Now it's just a matter of taking out the Varish. He was insisting on running all over the place. While we try to burn her down. This Zed, by the way, in case you didn't notice, is a, a lot more competent uh, at steering flames than the other character's Zed. Because this one has fire attunement. And Glyph Lesser Energy helps. I mean, I could have had that if I wanted it. So many like effects going on up here that are specific. So each time I lose an enchantment, I lose all enchantments. So when this prot spirit wears out, all of my enchantments will go away. It's nice to be able to have that hex just gone. Okay, this is the part where I want to take my heroes back up here. There's no reason to apply critical agility at the moment. And this just stays on you. Some of this stuff is going to be easier on Guru though, Senso. Some of it's going to be harder. Taking care of Arms of Insanity, for example, will probably be easier because I can use this combo. This is the part. Oh man, freaking Zephyr is wrecking our energy as it always does. Yeah, we got a lot of torment creatures coming in here, causing me trouble. Oh, goodness. Get me out of here. Get the spear down. Oh, my goodness. The number of debuff effects going off on me right now is ridiculous. This can be really an awkward area. Oh, hey, Dying got her ridiculous when enchantment ends on you, debuff gone. That's nice. Oh my goodness, where is this line of endless torment creatures coming from? Okay, I might need to reapproach how I'm doing this. I apparently just have endless torment creatures fighting me. This is, okay, this is getting ridiculous. Hey, Derpy Mongoose. Yeah, but I kind of feel like I've not had problems with it if I put my heroes back here. I think I don't, I just don't have my heroes back far enough. That's what the issue is. Uh, okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again, except I need, let, let's just try flagging my heroes a bit further back. And then if that doesn't work, I'll swap out some effects. Also, hello, Derpy Mongoose. Good to see ya. You're one of the people that watched me way back in the day when I first tried streaming. If I remember correctly, anyway. That was a long time ago. No, take this one out. Or not. Hey, just means I get more Forgotten Retribution, right? Okay. Yeah, maybe I should be bringing some Mesmer damage in here.
Mm. Well, I'm glad it can be that for you. Okay, Varish. Let's uh, let's try to get you actually taken care of here. Man, I feel like Shido in the Gate of Madness, just chasing after the person trying to take him down. Struggling with it. Varish is very insistent on not staying still. Part of it's because she keeps going for, like, characters that are... Yeah, I don't think Zed is... Like, I think Zed's doing stuff. I don't think the elemental damage is pulling its weight. Okay, maybe if we're up here, this will work a little bit better. Yeah, because part of what's happening is they're patrolling around. I need to go forward enough to aggro Varish. I need to be careful about this. Hmm. This one can be, like, weirdly terrible, I guess. Maybe she doesn't like going to you when you're too far back. Sure, give me those coins. Okay, let's pull everybody back a little bit. The big thing is I don't want to catch too many torment creatures. Okay, well we're gonna have to fight some here. It's kind of inevitable. Maybe I just want to focus on Varish. And just get absolutely ridiculously coated in hexes. Wow, okay, I need shadow form apparently. Yeah, because what's happening is I'm just getting like too many torment creatures stacked up here, right? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna be changing the dudes around after this. This is clearly not working. I mean, I'll give it an attempt, but. Part of it is, I think, Kim is not great at her job. Okay, yeah, this is this is clearly not working. Uh, I don't think this character is high enough to get ha to have Lightbringer Signet yet. I think it's just rank two. Yeah. So I don't. This Signet's not available until rank three. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I need to bring General Morgan. I do like my s having incoming fallback. I don't think I'm going to be bothering with some of their on fire stuff. Or Bob Sear. Blade Turn Refrain is good. Stand Your Ground is good. Um, I think I'm going to drop Sin and Zed. Uh, I might try keeping Kim for now and just adding Odora as another... There. Hey, thank you very much for the uh, Twitch Prime sub, Derpy Mongoose. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. What else do I want to do with General Morgan? 11 Spear. Blazing Spear is not a bad idea. It does decent damage. Um. Oh, I don't have Go for the Eyes here. That's interesting. Let's go with... Anthem of Envy, maybe, then? Just to be something cheap. And... I mean... 
Never surrender seems like it might be good. I see. That's that's why I had him using uh, glowing signet because his uh, chalice and sufferer not lining up well. Strictly speaking, he probably doesn't need to be in speed buff mode, but I'm gonna kind of leave him there. Like this stuff is all fine. It's just not damaging, you know. What red stuff do I have? A bit, but not a lot. Mostly some elites. Odura will help with the damage. Um, I kind of want another physical attacker. I can grab Margaret. Or I could bring Zenmai. I think I'd rather go with Margaret. I think Zenmai has similar problems to what I've got going on. Um, you know what? Sure. Sure, why not? And I can just, instead of trying to use... No, uh, Blazing Spear's not a bad idea. Let's go, though, with Barbed Spear here. Uh, I th think, maybe? Or... I have Blazing, I have Barbed. Mighty Throw. Wearying Spear is one of those skills where it's like, why does this exist? Though? How am I supposed to work with this? Th so this is a Johnny skill. Uh, Johnny Jenny, which comes from magic archetypes of like, somebody's trying to figure out a puzzle. This feels like it's supposed to be a puzzle to figure out. Okay, this does a bunch of damage and it's cheap, but it also weakens me, which reduces effectiveness of stuff. I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to do with it. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to be handling the weakness. So, I find it very confusing. I think I'd rather just go with Barbed Spear here, regardless. Uh, you know what? No. No. I'm going to go Blazing Spear. The logic is I want him to be able to Anthem of Envy more often and not spend a bunch of energy on the other thing. This feels fine to me. Because the alternative is to try to work in the Glowing Signet, and I think I'm okay with it just kind of the way it is. Let's try this sort of configuration that's a little bit more offensively wanted. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to run Shadow Thief. Maybe I should be trying to run Flashing Blaze or something. Actually, Critical Agility has not been working super well here either. Um, it's been working okay, but it's not been working super well. I still want some sort of enchantment, though. I think I'll just hang on to it. I want enchantment because I want to be able to trigger... Um, the unblockable effect on Golden Fang, Golden Fox Strike. For anybody who was wondering. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'll, I'll try this configuration, for the moment. See how it goes. Yeah. There's a lot of skill rebalances I'd like to see. Smiting Prayers also is one that I'd like to see, but I don't anticipate we'll ever get any, anything addressing any of those, unfortunately. It's a fun exercise to think through, okay, if I were to rebalance this, what would I do? But, anyway, we are ready. There's a lot of things I had tweak in Ritualist as well. Ritualist is, Ritualist is probably the most inconsistent in terms of power level as a profession uh, of the various professions in the game. Yeah, the elites that we got were unexpected. I'm super happy that they gave them to us, though. Well, this is already feeling better. At least that little bit was. And then that guy's down. Let's see how this goes. I don't want to farm all of my Forgotten Retribution up on that one dude, but it feels like I'm trying to. You really don't uh, find the LA1 at all worthy, do you? I don't blame you. I think the LA1 is a little bit mildly more interesting than people give it credit for, but I don't think it's amazing. I think the most interesting one is the warrior one. 
But the Paragon one's probably the raw strongest. Seven weapon stance. I'm not sure if we've lost context. Like, the Elemental's Elite does, has, like, a couple of bars that I've made with it that I'm like, this is cool. And mostly, it does not feel like it is very good. Oh, I see part of the issue is, like, dudes just pop up over here for no good reason. I don't know. That's problems. Alright, I reject your lightning reflexes. The Ranger one is really solid. I think it is probably a little underrated. Yeah, it just keeps popping dudes up. Okay, let's pull back a little bit. Needs more people testing its uses for it to be hard because for everything you can use it for. Yeah, it's definitely an inherently strong effect. So it's hard for me to to not feel that fact of it. Oh my goodness, the blurred vision is absolutely brutal. Oh goodness, the shatter, just death blossom this thing. Come on, okay, good crit. There we go. That went better. Smoothly is a bit strong though. Stop the ritual. Does it end with Varish's death? I don't know. Each part of the ritual at Gandara, at the Temple of Lissa, and now here, was to weaken the walls of Abaddon's prison. If the walls are weakened too much, could something breach them from the other side? From the realm of torment itself? I don't know. The answer Everyone, is yes. Out of the area now. Night has fallen on Ilona. The heroes must confront the dark god Abaddon in the realm of torment itself. Yeah, so... Like... I mean, definitely if you're trying to do a, a power ranking of them... Um, have your attack skills disabled for 10 seconds, your assassin skills activate and recharge 30% faster. Uh, I'll... grab that. It could have some build around potentials. Um, ooh, arcing shot. Oh, keen arrow is also really good. I'll grab that. Um, so let's see. The Paragon one's probably the strongest. The Warrior one gives you a lot of build around. Heroic refrain, seven weapon stance. Uh, Time Ward, the Mesmer one is all right. Um, twenty six trade contracts. Uh, it never ends. Yeah, I get you. 
Um, the... Yes, okay. This is the next quest forward. I have to bring it on Koro with me. Goodbye, Margaret the Sly. Goodbye, Kim. Uh, hello, Dung Koro. Um, Dung Koro, you're set up to be healing prayers. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is not ideal. Let me see what other options I have, though. Mesmer feels like everyone is looking past. Like, the Mesmer one feels like one of those ones where it's like, I can see this being, like, one of those things that's just, like, a little bit of lubrication to make your team work a bit better. Uh, the Assassin one is really solid, but not, like, amazing. The Ritualist one is a ton of fun. Uh, I really enjoy the Ritualist one a lot, particularly in, like, an MM team. Yeah, I see why I gave you the stuff I did. You're not really full of options here, my bud. My buddy, my pal. I guess I'll leave you as is. You know what? No, I just... I'm gonna give you healing touch. What can I say? What can I say? But I'm feeling like that's a good direction to go. Uh, Yeah, and then we can just roll with healer's boon. That's fine. Um, the Ritualist one is a lot of fun more than it's, like, the amount of value. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. You it's, Putting weapon spells on literally, like, almost everyone around you is really strong. Uh, I don't need Eve. Ah. Hmm. Bacalon, maybe, is all right. I think I'm going to leave General Morgan as he is for now. Yeah. And, like, the other thing, too, that's really subtle about it that uh, is easy to overlook is that the... Um oh, man, this zone's going to suck on Assassin. Okay, well, we're going to be getting a lot of use of critical agility here, hopefully. The, um... Sometimes you just get, like, weapons of warding that last for, like, 20 seconds. And it's just crazy. Uh, and you get, like, spirit light weapons that last for 20 seconds. Like, you just get stuff that just lasts way longer than it's supposed to and things like that. It's the inconsistency that will turn people off of, uh, three weapon forge or weapons of three forges or whatever it's called. Um, but... Heaven Weapon Stance is a lot of fun. I, I really do like Shadow Theft a lot. Uh, more for the fact that it's a quick, cheap recharging Shadow Step that also happens to count as a lead attack, which is a really cool combination to me. Um, the... You know what, though? I don't think I'm going to use it in this zone because I think I'm going to want Mobius Strike. I think Mobius Strike is going to be... I'm going to swap these, actually. I think Mobius Strike is just going to be more pleasant to use out here. Um, the Ranger one, the Mesmer one. I'm just trying to think through. The Mesmer one's Time Ward. The Monk one is... So, I like the Monk one, but I can see why a lot of people might not. Um, I think it's really good on secondary Monks. Because it's it's quick recharging, it, it hits an area of effect, it's five energy, like relatively quick recharging. I think it has a quick activation time of like a second as well. And it does knockdown on attacking enemies and some no decent bonus holy damage. I think the monk one's actually like, I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's stronger than people are like, likely to give it credit for, particularly on secondary monk. Um, I think it has a lot more value than might be obvious. This is one of the things that I like that they did in uh, Nightfall, by the way, is one of the things that they ran into as a problem in both prophecies and factions is critical NPCs that then just, like, get themselves killed and people, like, hating them because of, of that. Uh, and one of their solutions to it here was just make those NPCs 
uh, non-combat and therefore invulnerable because they're not actually helping you fight. They can kind of stick them in that category. Which I think was a good way of solving the problem. Oh, my energy is awful. Yeah, Prince Rurik is an excellent example of that phenomenon. Okay, where's the stupid Shadow of Fear? Stop! Stop, Shadow of Fear. Like, Prince Rurik is supposed to be a noble hero, heroic character. And particularly in the Ruins of Sermia mission where he... Ruins of Sermia is the mission that I think really made players hate Prince Rurik. He has a tendency to just run off by himself and get himself killed, and everybody hated him for it. I don't blame him. It's really annoying when he does that. Yeah. Because, like, he's not in the previous two missions, right? He's not in um, the Great Northern Wall, or he shows up at, in the end of Fort Rannick, but he's not principally in that one. Uh, oh my goodness, the Arms of Insanity, they're multiplying. Yeah, sure, give me your Demonic Relic. Uh, he's also, like, his ro role in the Nolani Academy is a lot less. Uh, he kind of, like, he. there's some spots there where he can die. For sure, and like drive players crazy by doing so. But for the most part, it's Ruins of Sermia where he's most likely to run himself, run off, and get himself killed. Because like also, once you get to um, uh, the Shiver Peaks, he shows up in the middle. But doesn't doesn't actually like follow your party around or anything in Borlas Pass, so he he basically appears in a cutscene again, and then you're kind of just like he's going beside you, but he's not really doing anything in uh, Frostgate. If you're too slow in that one section, he could die, and that could make players really angry at him as well. But for the most part, um, for the most part, he. Oh, uh, yeah, getting AI stuck on stuff is really annoying. It's mostly the Ruins of Sermia mission that he's going to get himself killed in. I don't know why people join chats and just post links. Oh, my goodness, my energy, please. I need that for doing things. So if there's going to be a mission that makes you hate Prince Rurik, it's going to be that one. Uh, would be... Because people believe they can make money... No. Because people do make money off of it. If, if people did not make money off of spam email, it wouldn't be worth their time. Uh, but they're able to make money somehow, and that's the tragedy. That's why spam email exists. Is that else because they believe it makes them money? Amounts to much the same thing. In the end, I suppose. The annoyance of everyone else. Sure, I'll take your crude axe. Okay, you know what? This group up here needs more attention. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I don't necessarily mind links, by the way. If they're like to the wiki, I think they're just straight up allowed. Um, 
but be a part of chat first in general. Oh, Madness Titans. I still think the best solution to Madness Titans is Backfire. They just absolutely destroy themselves if you backfire them. Okay, Tortured Sun Spear. Well, a fellow Sun Spear. You're not someone I expected to see. Uh, and then, yeah, okay. We saw this stuff fairly recently. Um, to speed stuff up a little bit, I'm going to start skipping these cutscenes because we saw them extremely recently. Uh, like, we saw that one last stream, I think, which was yesterday. Uh, so if you want to see it, look up that VOD. Uh, or wait till tonight when the VOD goes up, I guess is actually more accurate. Um, thank you for the reward, Jaren Doc. I will probably want to tweak bars a little bit. Let's see, this is the one. Hmm. Ah, this is probably fine. Let's just sell a couple of things to this guy here. Um, I might want to change my bar around a bit. This is actually a spot where it'd be really nice to be slash warrior and have disrupting sweep or whatever, but that's not how things are. Um, I do believe, though, that I have, yes, disrupting dagger. So let's just throw a few points in deadly arts. Uh, let's drop this. Let's slot in Disrupting Dagger. Uh, I guess I can also bring Exhausting Assault. Let's see. I still will want this chain. But maybe... Hmm. Or I could drop it and go for the other one. Nah, I think this chain's good. Um, I can drop Twisting Fangs, though. This is probably enough of an in interrupt. Let's just drop Dash for Shadow Theft again, I guess. That seems fine. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Or I could just stick with Mobius. Is that, is that just better? Yeah, let's just stick with Mobius. Let's just keep it slotted in there and just bring Disrupting Dagger as a way to be able to interrupt stuff if I want to. Uh, I guess I'll leave the rest of these guys as they are. And uh, let's go. Go bring down this dam that has uh, Duncoro's son trapped. So we can make Duncoro care about things. Like, I appreciate that they give us some backstory of what's going on and kind of like reveal layers of truth that were hidden from the player uh, from times before the player were here. But. Shadow of Fear, eh? Maybe I should be using uh, more... more energy stabs. speed buffs. I like them. Uh, I even need more energy. Okay, let's do something about this word of madness. And then the shadow of fear is causing real problems. 
I mostly brought this to deal with the elementalist here, as an FYI. If anybody was wondering. Specifically these guys up here. Let's give the party a moment to heal up some. Okay, that looks good. Meteor shower is specifically my target. Yeah, please don't stand in Meteor Shower's backline. Meteor Shower is particularly good against the AI just because it's really bad at recognizing it's in it. I've talk talked about this the last time we were here, though, so it's nothing new. Just look for the casting animation going on for way too long, and that's a good clue that it's uh, trying to meteor shower you. There we go. I do feel like Gerudo Senso got to be a little bit stronger than Immerhill in terms of just like getting a bipper and getting splinter weapon. Both of those are pretty good. That was an example of, oh, that thing's being in his casting animation for a while. I should kill it now. Okay, this thing should die before it gets that off. I'm just going to salvage this flame artifact. Oh, my dust is full. Okay. Dust is good to have a bunch of, but has a lot of dust. So what I'm currently thinking, by the way, uh, yeah, it turns out Bip, Bip and Splinter Weapon are pretty good. Um, I think I should be able to finish Nightfall off here on this guy today. And then... Um, I'm just going to wait for this emissary to spawn. Actually, no. Let's just go after the drider. Haha. -ha. Walls. These things hurt. Let me stab you. There we go. Um, and then there'll probably be, I'm guessing, one more stream of this slow playthrough that'll go back to Immerhill and do a bunch of quests that I jumped over to get to the end of the game, uh, more quickly. Uh, but we'll be doing a bunch of stuff, I'm guessing, on Immerhill for the next one of these Nightfalls things, and that'll hopefully wrap stuff up. And then we'll be looking at Eye of the North. Uh... For the next slow playthrough, but I'll I'll be taking a break of sl between like slow playthrough things. Just, I need one. But I'm looking forward to seeing what I of the North has to offer. So when that that time comes, and of course I've mentioned it before, but Sorrow's Furnace. I want to do a playthrough of that before I do. Um, the uh before i do eye of the north because i think it's really important to see what happens in sorrow's furnace because so much of that so much of eye of the north is built on sorrow's furnace and i my recollection is i don't feel like they did a great job of executing on it like it's technically it's one of those things where it's like i guess technically you're kind of talking about this thing but it doesn't really feel like you're talking about this thing Kind of like the Star Wars prequel trilogy to me doesn't feel like it's talking about the same thing as we got in the original. In the original trilogy. Okay, 
This guy is apparently on my face. I'm turning my camera this way because I want to be able to see if your shower starts happening. Yeah, let's see, this is the thing that can happen. I'm gonna pull us back. There. Let's just de aggro them. I don't need to kill them. No, come over here. Stop trying to heal. The worst thing that happens is the monks get hit by a meteor shower and then they try to heal while standing in the meteor shower. And then you just have dead monks because they're standing in the meteor shower. Um, but like. It, it's like, I guess technically you have talked about the thing that you said, but it doesn't feel like you've done it. So, like, I think about the um, the scene in Obi-Wan's hut between him and Luke in, in A New Hope. And I'm like, the way that you're describing the past there does not feel like the way the past plays out in the prequel trilogy we got. And, like, I don't think, like, what what actually got presented to us is, like, I guess this is kind of that, but it doesn't feel like it connects properly. So to me, it's just like, there's eh, the different continuities. I enjoy the prequel trilogy for what it has to offer. Uh, I enjoy the original trilogy for what it has to offer. Um, but I feel kind of that way of like, I think I of the North does some interesting stuff. I don't feel like it does the Great Destroyer stuff properly, based upon what was in Sorrow's Furnace for the Great Destroyer. So, and... That's that's part of why I want to like take a look at all that stuff because I think it will be interesting and informative. Actually, really glad I did a Mobius combo here. It's working really well. Okay, I'm gonna give a moment for heroes and stuff to recover energy. Yeah, this should be enough time if things go smoothly enough. I may need to take a short break after this mission, though. These guys are remarkably far back. I feel like they're usually a bit closer than this. Ah, Disrupting Dagger. You're doing good work, my friend. There we go. Oh, I need to kill more for the Elite Emissary in the middle. I probably need to kill some of the Driders there. That's annoying. I wanted to just, like, kill it and peace out, but nope. That's okay. I'll go get them. <sighs> the sigh. Yeah, I probably need to take out these terror web driders. The issue is I don't want to end up having to fight the, uh, the other group there, and the patrols here are quite... Patrolly. Unfortunate. That will... Okay, that was all I needed to do. Take out those two. We're good. I don't have to worry about anything else in there. Yeah, to, to actually de defeat an elite emissary, you have to take out the emissary itself and its support staff. Uh, I guess they'll carry on its work if you don't or something. It's a hot day today. Our house does not have good internal ventilation, unfortunately, which I'm very suboptimal. What it basically means is that uh, air doesn't pass between the rooms of the house super well, so my room tends to get pretty hot because I have a bunch of electronics running here. It's got a nice window you can't see right over that way, uh, letting some 
light into the room, which I appreciate, but also adds heat. Anyway, it gets hot in here, but uh, that heat tends to kind of get trapped in my room and not get to the thermostat literally just outside my door uh, to let the house know it should maybe cool things down. We do have a central air conditioning. It's just... It doesn't... Just bit me. This doesn't do anything without uh, the thermostat telling it to. So. so my room does tend to get a bit warm. Got a couple of fans going. They're helping, though. Talking about random stuff. That's one of the things you have to do. You're trying to, trying to hopefully keep some interesting session going. Okay, how do I want to approach this? I think I want to come in from the side, maybe? Try to take down these terror webs. I'm honestly not sure which is more dangerous. The terror webs getting a meteor shower off, uh, or the torture web doing boss damage. Once I saw that meteor shower was not happening, though, I have to at least switch over to this guy, because... That guy's definitely more dangerous if the meteor shower isn't happening. It's just the, the chances of my entire team being caught in a meteor shower and dying because of that are too high for me to um, ignore, I guess. I can't go anywhere because of my trees. Okay. Uh... go. And that can stay on the floor too. Everything else. Okay, this is the part where I have to figure out where the geometry actually works. What the heck? Uh, that's what was happening. I was not synced properly. Okay. Uh, let's kill some terror web riders, shall we? Yeah. Got the meteor shower off. I'm pulling my party forward because I don't want them standing in a meteor shower. Okay, well, they died, but we'll be fine. I must have gotten resigned. There we go. The last of the emissary destroyed. Oh, that's what's going on. My ping is randomly very high for a moment there. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll make things go very awkwardly. Uh, bridge? Please work? Okay, that bridge is apparently not as uh, smooth to traverse as I thought. Not moving when you're getting hit by lightning bolt is a good strategy for taking less damage. I recommend it. There we go. Those are the last two spirits. I just need to go join their friends over here. If we run alongside them, our uh, incoming fallback chain will speed them up. Which is nice. There we go. Uh, and again, we saw this cutscene just Thank you, Father. recently. We shall meet again in the mists. I'll let it play, however, while I take a short break. BRB. Koro, are you all right? Yes. Yes. I suppose I owe you an explanation. Years ago, I sent my son to the Crystal Desert. There were reports of strange things in the tombs of the primeval kings. 
tentacles bursting through the stone. Abaddon. Yes. My son was reported missing and presumed dead. I blame myself for sending him off without enough forethought. Which is why you always want to have a plan. I never knew what happened to him. Until now. But you have freed him. And the other innocents trapped here by Abaddon's touch. What about you, Cormir? Are you an innocent as well? What? Cormir is the most honorable of the Sun Spears. No. You are right. I am far from innocent, and my crimes are the greatest of all. It was I that first found the inscriptions in Istan, and I that awakened the Apocrypha of Abaddon. It is not your fault, Cormir. How could you have known? Tales of the Forbidden Ruins are part of our history. My curiosity and concern made me ignore those warnings. Even though you knew it to be an evil place, you explored the ruins. I did. And worse, I read the words of the Apocrypha. I felt his spirit. I was drawn into his web. Now my body withers, and my spirit walks in torment. That is why I serve as your guide. Where is Abaddon? He abides at the heart of his realm. He is still chained, but his power grows, and the walls around him grow weak. I fear that without the aid of the five gods themselves, we cannot hope to contain him. Then with the help of the five gods, we will. Well, that timing worked out nicely. Uh, right. So, I am back from my brief AFK, which was worthwhile. Hey, Katie. Welcome. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see. I want to go to Yovel. I need to. I need to do something about this dust, also. Um. Well, let's do something about this bow I don't need first. How have you been doing, Katie? I understand. I... My personal feeling on Twitter is that... Um, kind of feels like a thing that we would all be better off if it didn't exist. I kind of feel like the net negatives of Twitter, at least at this current point in time, outweigh the net positives. Largely because Twitter is too... It's become too much of a, like, a battlefield for people to... Uh, let's see. I want to split 24 off here. Um, to proclaim loudly what political or other, like, fundamentally political or ideological side they're on of things. And it's just, there's too much, like, that, and it's hard to avoid. So, I, I do not blame you in the slightest for saying goodbye to that. And there's a reason why the concept of the Doom Scroll has shown up. Uh, okay, Gate of Fear. Let's see. This is the one that makes us slower. I think I should be okay. I don't feel like I need Disrupting Dagger as much. I think I kind of just want to slot in Critical Eye and just roll with that. Although, having a Shadow Step would be potentially nice. Hmm. Well, I won't worry about that right now. For now, I will continue onwards. Uh, I am attempting to wrap up the main story of Nightfall on this character. Uh, for kind of like my slow playthrough series. 
But this is the secondary character, so we just saw a lot of this stuff on the primary character. I'm just trying to get them both to the end and then kind of releasing them from... I just realized I forgot to give this guy more skills when I got into the Realm of Torment, and I was supposed to have done that. So, while I'm thinking about it, let's do that right now. Uh, I need Nightfall General. Add one booster. Oh, what do you know? I got more Healing Breeze. Uh, ooh. Okay, this is actually pretty relevant so, new skills here. I got Power Drain. Uh, I got Staggering Blow. A couple of Dervish things that are somewhat useful. Disrupting Throw. Okay. Yeah, that one's nice to have. Zealous Renewal. Or, yeah, Zealous Renewal is nice. Never Give Up is nice to add in. Heal Party is a big pickup. Uh, that makes Dunkoro's Bar a lot better. Um, Death Pack Signet makes Olias' Bar a lot better. Just because it gives him a hard res. Uh... Sending Strike is nice to get access to... Okay. Some reasonable Elementalist stuff in here as well. Um, I just throw this into a standard sort and make sure I save the League. Cool. Um, well, that's actually significant enough in terms of new skills that I picked up that I actually want to go in here and go assign them. Uh, I want to give Dunkoro Heal Party over Healing Touch... And I want to give Olias Death Pact Signet over Resurrection Signet. There we go. Because I got that. Right down there. So those those to me are significant significant enough pickups that I want to do that. Uh, and it's worth it to me to go rezone to add those. I'm going so quickly, I'm forgetting the things I'm trying to do. Uh, let's go ahead and trigger that dialogue again and then go pick up this Forgotten Warden. Monster Hunt. That'll be good. Yep, you talk... Oh, wait, no. I need to wait for Camille to finish so I can talk to her. Wish I'd remember that a little bit earlier, but... This, this would have been nice in previous missions, is all I'm saying. Go on, get out of here, go see Scout. Yep, here I am, Cormier. Oh, we have won a significant victory. There might be multiple paths you can take through here, but I usually just go up this one. I can take a slightly different approach. Because last time I came in here with Immerhill. Is that yesterday or earlier today? I don't remember. They're blurring together a little bit. Um, I went to capture Stunning Strike off of the boss over that way. I think I started today with Gate of Madness, and it went super smoothly on Emmer Hill, so I'm hoping it goes similarly on uh, Giru, though, but I don't know. I'll find out. I wish there was, like... A little bit more of the sort of thing Mobius Strike is doing. I don't know. Like one other skill. Eh, it doesn't matter much. Okay, shoot a elementalist. Get out of here. Feeling pretty good about my choice to use Critical Eye right about now, by the way. Helping my energy a good bit. I think this Forgotten Warden just has the same buff I already had. Oh. Well, that just curves around up there, doesn't it? This thing does really like a, look like a giant dead bug to me. I think that's the the intent that they had with it.
but it has quite an imposing appearance. I'm glad to hear that. I don't know how you're like, but I tend to be very, like, completionist, and that makes me feel like, oh, I need to read everything everybody I follow posts, and it's just like, oh, there's too much. And it feels very obligation -y. I don't spend much time on Twitter these days. In a re as a related note. I technically have one. Yeah. It has a really cool aesthetic. Let me salvage this Ivory Hammer. Bones. That's not what I was expecting from that. Uh, except them. Not what I was expecting from that. Arachnia. Mmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, interesting super background stuff around here, lore-wise. I'm going to be doing a bunch of the side quests in these for these areas on uh, Imre Hill after I finish stuff on Twitter, though. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of that. Oh, right. I have to deal with Madness Titans. Madness Titans suck. Cloak, why? And of course, they are non fleshy. So they don't bleed either. I hate these things. I reckon it's the name of a now dead spider god said to be older than Abaddon and the other five gods. The gods themselves. Yeah, there's definitely indication of like more ancient gods. I think there's a lot of room for lore exploration in the Guild Wars universe with this idea of um, gods succeeding each other, like how Cormyrus succeeds Abaddon, like it assumes the mantle, and like what are the things that came before and stuff. I think there's something really interesting there to explore. Your auspicious parry will not save you, but it will help you. Yeah, there's this, like, bug-like thing up there. Now, what is that? You probably can't see it through compression, but there's some thing lurking in the background there. And then, Yeah, this right here is all going to lead up. and Like the head of something. There's a lot of really cool visuals here on the Realm of Torment. Okay, whatever. Let's just get this thing on me and auto attack for a bit. Hit all my auto attacks, miss my attack skill. That would actually not be a bad idea of a skill of like um, that makes attack skills miss, but not auto attacks. That would be kind of interesting. I'm trying, Elias. I'm trying. Uh, if you were wondering what I was just saying, Elias gets energy through soul reaping. So the way to get him more energy is to kill things. So what I was saying is like his energy is low. I'm trying to get him energy by killing enemies.
That's what I was saying with that. If anybody was wondering. No. Okay, good. We got that before it made more. Yeah, Elias is using VIP. I happened to random into it. So, I gave it to him. And some, like, curses and splinter weapon. He's all over the place. Perhaps, Cormier, this is what we're looking for. Okay, I am going to switch Twisting Fangs out for critical strikes here because this next map is very bad for energy. Where's the keeper? He'll make... I mean, that heal party is exp especially expensive, but... It is all right. Again, we just saw this stuff on Immer Hill, so... That's right, because I ended up last stream by going around collecting a bunch of quests that we'll probably do next stream. I'd like to finish this on him, this guy today. We'll see. If if Gate of Madness gives me problems, it might have to wait for another stream. But I really kind of want to just push through and get it done today, so we'll see how things go. We should hurry, yes. Also, a Veiled Nightmare is annoying. I like these zones a lot more if they didn't have the style of effects that they do. I feel like a lot of them are just, they make play more inconvenient. And like technically it's harder as well, but just like not in a way that's interesting. That's my main complaint. It's a really cool zone. I. The Realm of Torment is amazing. I just wish playing in it did not have the area effects that are so deeply obnoxious. That's all. Okay, we can ignore the Torment Claw there. Like, make me vanquish them, don't make me and like cartography even, and get rid of the effects, and I'd be like, yay. I bet it's part of the mist, not part of the world proper, so yeah, I get it. Like, this map is really cool, but having to deal with all of my stuff costs 40% more energy. Makes me a lot less interested in actually spending time here as a map, you know? That's, that's kind of the summary of my feelings, really. That group's going to go that way. Uh, this group's going to come this way. I think I might let that kind of happen and just go after this group rather than try to fight two groups at once. Also, I'm not going to apply critical agility just yet. This thing will inevitably just craft enchantment it and be a whole thing and annoying. Yeah, this is a way to do this. If you saw me do this uh, yesterday on Emmer Hill, you know that I went that way and fought that group and then this group came and ambushed me and it was a whole mess and I had a party wipe. I'm still going to want to go that other direction uh, on account of let's salvage this for some iron on account of it having a rest shrine that I want to activate. Okay, no warlocks in this group. Warlocks have their own very distinct appearance. Aegis. The amount of energy I'm generating with this bar is pretty ridiculous, too. 
At least they give you a Marganite Bounty really early on. I need to figure out something for you to do with them. Because, yeah, there's not a whole lot doing, doing with them right now. I agree. I just haven't, like... I don't feel like I have great ideas, and I haven't, like, sat down and, like, spent some time actually thinking about it. So... Not a whole lot right now to do with them. Oh, man. 26k channel points. Wow. That's... That's impressive. Yeah, I want to give you something to do with them. I'm just not sure what yet. I have some ideas for some, like... I have an idea for a thing. Um, that I'd probably... I don't know. I don't even know how to price things, either. I'd probably put it at decay. My thought was, but... Okay, there is... Those out there... Raven Monolith, stop hunting me. Oh my goodness, this is excruciatingly slow. I'm just not doing anything, so I'm just going to walk over here. Degen to death. Dunkoro... What are you doing with your self? You know, whatever. Part of this is the energy cost being so high. Part of it is everybody focusing on this Raven Monolith that's behind a wall. That doesn't help anything. We're not dying out, but ah, whatever. Our healing method seems to be using resurrection skills, and that's suboptimal. Uh, I have right now. All I'm doing is just trying to do alone in the darkness. I'm going to be doing a lot more of the additional quests on Imrahil later, like the next Nightfall slow playthrough stream, most likely, because I want to finish, um, why was that such a train wreck? I want to finish, um, Nightfall on both of the characters and then do more of the quests. I've done the Odd Bodies quest chain on Imrahil, um, but... Only, like, a couple other ones. Yeah, I understand. Because, like, I'm retracing ground very rapidly here at this point. Yeah, I can understand that. You, Markanite Warlock, are an absolute jerk. Oh my goodness. My energy. Yeah, give me your armor. Okay, I need to spend some time salvaging armor here, obviously. Factions is def or Factions and Nightfall really are both a bit twenty seven trade contracts. Well there you go. Are both a bit too unified visually to me, uh, like within themselves. I wish they were a bit less unified. 
Like, Crud has a lot of visual variety across it, for example. It's got the beaches, the more foresty areas. Why am I getting so badly wrecked by things all the time? I should probably use more antidotes so I can do it. Oh my goodness, I cannot do anything. I am so slow. This Grave Monolith is actually doing us a lot of damage. I think part of the issue here is I have like no Hex removal. I've got to remove Hex here. I don't have enough Hex removal. Okay, Grave Model has changed forms. That's frankly an improvement. And now I'm just accumulating so much death penalty. This is ridiculous. This should not be causing us this much trouble. Why is this causing us so much trouble lately? Okay, now we've got Aegis going. That not much. Probably because everybody's just dying too quickly. The amount of interrupts, like Mage Bane shots, that have just been a real pain in the rear end has been astronomical. These guys are, are really hitting them out of the park. Plus, I haven't really been feeling like I can use Critical Agility much, which would actually help my durability a lot, because it gives me plus 25 armor. And a much quicker attack rate. But the, the issue is the Necromancers have Corrupt Enchantment, so they just turn it into a bunch of degen, which is why I haven't been using it. Boy, I feel like we're out of a really rough area. This is some sort of like Marganite complex, so. I will see what can be done. Let's just execute this Graven Monolith. Let's see. I would like to f bring some stuff that's good against the Titans in the next map. Uh, how do I want to conduct things? I might drop General Morgan and bring both monks, maybe? Or maybe I want to bring... You know, I probably want to bring Norgu into the next one. Again, I'd really prefer not to fight these titans. Okay. You take care, mana guy. I'm assuming you're heading towards bed. Alright. So, I wish you a good sleep. There we go. Successfully stealthed around those titans. Titans are, like... The big titans don't bother me. It's the madness titans that are just so irritating. I do love this area, though. Like, look at this. This is incredible. I wonder if any of the stuff in Fractals of the Mist looks like that. I, mean, I was just thinking, like, is there anything in Guild Wars 2 that kind of m matches the mist zones in this one? And I Like, Fractals is technically kind of mist-y, I guess. That's, what I was, that's where my brain was thinking. Anybody who's wondering. Okay, there's Scout Atok. Again, saw him at the beginning of Gandara.
You know what? If it's going to remove my enchantment, it's going to remove my enchantment. Actually, there isn't. Here, so that's good. Plus 25 armor does a lot to reduce damage, so. Oh. Well, I suppose something else stripped it off of me. Exactly, but something must have. Seer, that's probably what it was. It was, Atok, it was. Also, hi. Last I see you, I was on the docks of Gandar before I was slain. I'm glad to see you. You got here just in the nick of time. We are ready to enter at the Gate of Madness. Uh, yeah. I'm not watching this cutscene again. We Again, we just saw that really recently. Okay. Runic Oracle. So we want to contact the five gods. I want to sell this thing to Yovel over here. Please take the scythe. Thank you. Uh, 100 Lightbringer points. Where is my Lightbringer title at this point? I am Brave Lightbringer now. Um, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and grab Lightbringer Signet. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it right off the bat. Um, oh, yeah. I can turn in this quest, too. I'll do that. Uh, Vishrakesh. So, for this mission, I'm definitely... like I'm going to want to keep this... General combo going. Um, but I'm definitely going to want flashing blades. Yep. You're welcome, Vish. Okay. Uh, let's go to the Chantry of Secrets. I want to go pick up the signet here. Off of the Seeker of Whispers. Hey, Molecular Mushroom. Hello. Interesting. And I will be on my way. Okay, let's go back into the vortex. And there's a couple of ranger skills I wanted to pick up here. Uh, okay. There was a ranger skill I wanted to pick up here. I picked it up. Heh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it depends upon what you mean by politics. I don't actually work in any sort of political fields, but I like talking about stuff. In the end, that kind of gets political in a way. And to some extent, game design stuff is politics when you're creating systems. So... Okay, let's get you out of here, General Morgan. Let's get you out of here, Menlo. Let's grab Talcora and her. Do I want. Hang on, how do I want to do this? Do I want to just run both monks? Hmm, I'm not familiar with it. Jason, Graz, Aiden. Maybe I want just Talcora. Let's kick Talcora. Bring Talcora and Menlo and Norgu. Watch regarding the social media and online entertainment. How to be used by companies. Mm, that does sound like a really interesting documentary. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me think about how I might want to be doing stuff. I feel like this, for the most part, is all right. Mark of Pain is good, but maybe not entirely pulling its weight. Shadow of Fear is a good damage mitigant. 
Um, do I have any other ritualist stuff that would be good? Actually, renewing surge is not a bad option. Mark of pain is one of those skills that's like really strong in some stuff. Mm. That's cool. Unfortunately, I don't have Netflix, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of concerns that I have about some of the ethical stuff that's being done. Okay, this is not that amazing without a higher investment in channeling magic. I think so if I were to just straight up drop curses, obviously I'd be losing something that I put rune in, but and I put that into channeling. I could get my channeling up to 12. That give me splinter weapon. That'd give me a better renewing surge. Is Gaze of Fury useful? Uh, not really. It definitely sounds like an interesting thing. Um, yeah, social media, social media, so I have a couple of big problems with social media the way it's currently working, I guess, for lack of a more accurate phrase. Um, let's grab Well of Blood. That sounds useful. Probably my big problems with social media is everybody takes it too seriously. Um, so, I mean by that like twitter is twitter is batting way outside its weight class in terms of relevance twitter is not real life it is not particularly that like the number of people on twitter is not a majority of human beings or like in america like my context is always american i know i have a lot of european viewers and i, I appreciate you greatly uh but my context is more american just because that's wh where i live and so it's like that that tends to be the framing that I have and I definitely have uh, an, an issue with how much of the news is like here's what's happening on Twitter we'll use that to uh, discuss what's going on in the world um, mm, made you change your views on social media not only to know that it can actually make such harm and not only it's another level yeah, like, I think the world would be, like, I, I feel like Twitter has introduced a net negative to the world. Uh, I think the world would be off, better off without Twitter. What do I want this last skill to be? I'd kind of want it to be something in channeling, but there's not... Wielder Strike is not a worthwhile skill. Gaze of Fury? Might have a few targets. I guess I can bring Gaze of Fury. I feel like that's just a filler. Frankly, most of this is just using Bip and Bloody of the Aggressor and Splinter Weapon anyway. And having a stronger Splinter Weapon seems more useful than Mark of Pain here in the current circumstances. It's like people attribute too much to social media. And then the other the other problem with social media is it's got like this knock on fame effect where I, I watched a really interesting interview um, with Katy Perry. I don't know. Catherine Hudson. Um, I mean, yeah, but they don't have to. But anyway, it was talking about the way that, like, she created a persona and, like, adopted that, like, shell, that, that facade. Uh, like, it's not fake, but it's not the authentic her. And, like, social media is pushing people to do that in mass, and it's just not psychologically healthy. Uh, we need to be able to be, like, authentic. And I try to be, like, myself on here as much as I can. Um, and, and such, so. Uh, I have, hello, the Judgmental Unicorn. Welcome. Uh, that's what you liked about this documentary, that, is that they specifically said technology is great. It's what happened with big corporations and money putting tons of greed in the system. And now the great technology we once used to connect lost families to help people find donors turn into a weapon to screw around with people. Yeah, well, part of the thing that I think got Trump elected in particular, because uh, I was I was paying attention a lot to the Republican primary, and every interview with any of the other other candidates was always, "What do you think about this thing Trump said?" And it was just you couldn't get away from it. 
everything had to be about him. And, like, I get an element of that from the standpoint of, like, he kept saying outrageous stuff, and it was really good for views and things, but, oh, man, it was... Okay, I'm going to drop this for Glyph of Lesser. Uh, it was just omnipresent focus on Trump said this, Trump did that. Let's talk about Trump. And the candidates could not talk about anything other than Trump because that's what all the interviewers were talking or like asking them to comment on. Uh, let's grab Aegis. I think Aegis is going to be, well, Aegis or Prot Spirit, which seems more important. I think I might actually go with Prot Spirit here. Shield of Regen, Guardian, Shielding Hands. Do I want Shielding Hands? Do I have another option? Shielding Hands is probably good. Ah, uh, I understand fear. Politics is complicated. Okay, and then Shield of Regen will help with the way that this zone works. Uh, Elias is probably fine. Let's take a look at Norgu. Um, at this point, everyone knows you use Cambridge Analytica and these tons of Facebook data, etc. to target ads to support Trump to different people online and manipulate tons in his favor. Pretty much why the company went down and had to go in front of the Senate. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of manipulation stuff going there. Well, one of the other things that's really important, because um, I grew up in a uh, Republican household, is... Trump basically became the persona of what they said they needed. So what I mean by that is, like, if you spent time in, like, the 90s and 2000s and stuff, um, particularly during the Clinton and Obama administrations, the sort of thing, but some during Bush as well, some of the ways that the, the Republican, uh, like, commentary machine, punditry, discussed things, the, the things that they were talking about were like of oh we need this to happen and we ne need that to happen is all very much so like Trump stepped right into the those things and basically is like I will become that avatar that all of the like punditry class is saying the Republicans want and need uh, and I think that's a significant contributing factor to all of this as well um, I like having energy drain here. I want backfire to help deal with some of the caster nonsense. I, I just, to me, I find politics really interesting to analyze from a, like, a step back a bit perspective. Because there's a lot of, um, wonky stuff that goes on in politics land. But I also, like, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to, like, offend anybody. Well, that's not quite the right word. I would rather people think, even if they're, like, offended. I don't want to necessarily, like, come down in a judgment on anything. That, that's what it is. I don't want to be judgmental about people's political views. Because I understand the complexities that go into forming your worldview. Um, and how that kind of can change over time as well. All right. Uh, let's see if this goes well. Hopefully it does. We need to get to that temple. We are ready. But yeah, it's like social media, I do think, has, like, it's just so rife for abuse. And the problem is you need to educate people on how social media abuse works. Uh, if you really want to be able to try to overcome that abuse. Uh, I might not actually have a ton of use for Antidote Signet here now that I think about it. There's not a lot of conditions. That might be better off being a Lightbringer Signet. Yeah, you know what? I've just convinced myself. There's just not enough conditions here. I'm going to swap that out for Lightbringer Signet. I think that's just going to be better. And then at that point, I don't feel like I need Critical Eye as much, so I'm just going to fit in uh, Lightbringer's Gaze, too. Okay, let's let's just restart that. But I kind of feel like social media is going to be a really rough period for us at large until we learn how to properly manage it um, as a people, right? Because that's the thing is 
like, it needs, again, I just, I keep going back to, it needs to be taken less seriously. Uh, social media just straight up needs to be taken less seriously. Because it is not representative of real life in any way. It is, it's an echo of it, but it's not representative of it. Plus, one of the other things that's kind of challenging is it expands our world beyond what we're capable of handling. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, we often feel like we need to try to do something about all of the ills that we are are told about through social media, whether or not they exist. Uh, it's another matter. Disinformation on social media is rampant. I think most people know that. But, like, we, we want to do something about those ills, but the problem is we find ourselves often feeling very powerless to do anything about them. Uh, and that is also a huge source of stress. Um, and, like, it's more about what can we do in our own little community, the area where we have influence and impact. Um, but it's very easy to feel like, oh, we need to... I need, I need to do something to try to fix the world. And that's just, like, too much responsibility. Uh, so. But video games are a nice retreat from that. Because we are powerful enough to, f to save the world in video games. And I think we all enjoy that. Okay, Titan Abominations. No, no, no not that skill, this skill. Give me some energy. Did I clear out my inventory? I did. Oh boy. Well, we're about to see how well Backfire deals with uh, some of these Madness Titans, eh? Yeah. You can do it, Norgu. You can backfire these guys. And if a political conversation... I just want to just say this while it's on my mind. If a political conversation is getting uncomfortable for anybody, go ahead and let me know, and we can change the topic. I'm cool with that. I'm going this way this time. I went the other way last time. Bow hammer, eh? Are these highly salvageable daggers? Nope. They probably have a good chance of dropping the steel, though. Teach this mod this Titan a lesson. Yes. Did you see how much damage it did to itself once it started casting its things? That's gonna backfire. Doing a good job. I don't think the AI is smart enough about putting backfire on dervishes though. Soul barbs there are a lot better about. Soul barbs is really good against dervishes as well. I'm gonna salvage these steel daggers. I feel like they often salvage into steel. Yeah, I gotta steal and get from him. If you use a high enough salvage kit, obviously. You can't just do it with a bog standard bit and expect it to work. This skill works really well with quicking Zephyr as a random side. Yeah, Elias has a tendency to get himself killed, unfortunately. 
Also, we seem to have over aggro slightly. Not too bad. Actually, coming this way will help prevent uh, an ambush from over here like I had last time. So, there is some benefits to coming this direction for the last endpoint. Uh, remember that there are a couple of sides that will be popping up as we get closer to these things. There's some yellow dye. I already have yellow dye on this guy. Nope. Well, good thing we should be wrapping this up soon and getting access to my shun line so I can get out my dye issue. Take that for my claw. All right. The normal way that I would approach this is actually coming up here. Um, you can trigger this dialogue, go down and go in over there, but you can also just come up here and go in this way. Don't think it matters that much. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit, bit long today because I would really like to finish this up on everybody. Remember, these guys do not count as demonic servants of Abaddon. Can I get this blazing wing wand? I can. Yeah, this is. There's some of my effects come into play. Like. Gaze of Fury. Gaze of Fury did a thing. Actually, Gaze of Fury can destroy the um, the Ranger Spirits, too. I forgot about that. That's useful. So normally I'd come down here this way. You may well be impressed with yourselves who have made it this far, but do not expect me to be as friendly as that Canthan bodyguard. Your presence is an affront to this temple's Morganite worshippers. You shall be greeted with open claws and show no remorse in the house. In the unlikely event that you survive the wrath, I shall be waiting. Uh, do be careful about rushing in here. It's very easy to, like, if you rush in too far, you will get, like, just lomped on by a bunch of enemies and killed, potentially. So be careful about that. Uh, the portal wraiths might blind me. That is something to consider, but... probably have some sort of spawn here. Again, this is an area where it's very easy to want to rush and get wrecked because of it. Good job, Telfora. Go down this way. Again, I want to be careful about aggro. I don't want to get too much aggro. It's very easy to overdo it here. Yes, cry of frustration. No eruption. I'm having a hard time with blind here, but I can at least shoot demonic servants of Abaddon with my QP lasers, with my laser eyes. Nothing like laser eyes.
No. Okay. I'm gonna get ignored. Okay. This Marganite Cleric needs to go down. Where is that last portal wraith? Thank you. That's all around very helpful. Mm, I want to salvage these. Wood. But why though? More wood. Too much wood. Would that they would give me less wood. Okay, um. You come over here, please. And they hurt some, but not especially durable. Come on, there we go. Again, this whole place is an exercise in patience and not over aggroing. Okay. Next set of portal wraiths. I do think these guys might be weak to cold damage as just a random aside. It's not particularly relevant. boost good uh, okay I want to be careful again I'm seeing this group move out I'm happy to take on this reign of terror group but I want to be careful to not aggro too much at once aggroing too much at once is how you fail this mission in painful and horrendous ways so then I want to let this Marganite group Kind of wander around a little bit, so that way they get away from those portal rates over there, so that way I can fight them without that being a problem. Yeah, I remembered seeing them wander around, so I knew that they'd come over to a spot where I could deal with them. Quarter second activation time. This skill is a lot better than I've given it credit for in the past. I was always kind of a little underwhelmed by it, but... I've come to really appreciate its virtues, shall we say. Which is providing you with a lot of energy, if that was not abundantly clear by its function. Ow. Okay, these portal rights just need to go down, or we're gonna have an endless thing of enemies, and that's no good. I am going to try the thing where I send my heroes in to clear out the areas from the map, by the way. That could be folly. It could go swimmingly. Uh, I think it should go swimmingly. But just mentioning that that's kind of my plans right now. Once that gate is open. Okay, just need to close the last portal. Again, I want to be careful here. I want to make sure I'm not over aggroing. I want to make sure I've like cleared stuff out. Slow and methodical is the way to go. You don't want to fight that whole group at once. And you don't want to go fight those guys and have these titans like randomly wander over to you. We've got a warlock. Pretty sure. I'm just running the ramping out there. Okay, I need. Yeah, that helps. Uh, there we go. I'm just instructing Norgu to. Give that warlock what's for. <laughs> and he did. Excellent.
Or if you didn't, somebody did. And that's the important part. a few more conditions than I was expecting, but not by too much. Okay, I need to get off of that. There we go. Cleared out. Okay, let's see how well this works, eh? I'm just going to try flagging everybody over there. Uh, if they start dying, I guess I'll probably drag them back. But I want to not get too close. I want to see how well this works, because this is something that I've heard about people doing, and I've never done it myself. Uh, I think I should be fine over here. I'm just waiting for this... Onk to turn blue is basically what's happening here. I have no idea if something's happening or if they're stuck on geometry. It might be stuck on geometry. Let me do this for a moment. Nope, nope, they're getting it. Okay, I just need to wait for it to turn blue. And then there's the buffs. Send them over to the next one. I think that's got a circle now instead of a uh, flag. So yeah, I've heard of people doing it this way and just like sending their heroes in to do the dirty work before you initiate the battle. Uh, looks like there's still things over here that need to be taken care of, though. Because it turned against us. Maybe I need to get a little bit closer? Uh, you might not get to keep them if you do it this way. I don't know how this works. If there's just like enemies there that are not activated, that they're not fighting. Then we might not get to keep them. We'll find out. This is not the most exciting way of doing this though, that's for sure. But if you're ever struggling with this, this is probably a safer way of doing it. I think I might leave them there a moment longer. Okay, let's send them back over to this one. I want to reclaim the buffs from it. So we get Warrior's Might, 10% armor penetration, 10% faster attacking, Plus an armor from Cloak of Faith. Uh, plus one health regen from Aura of Light, which is nice. Yeah, this is far and away the the lesser of the interest or the less interesting way of doing this. There we go. Getting that one reclaimed. I'm gonna send him a little bit further back. There we go. Melandru gives us plus 20 armor against elemental damage and plus 50 maximum health. Oh, okay. I see. I'm sending them to a specific target point so they are 
registering that as like their defense point or something different than just like having them there. Presumably they've cleared out whatever was at the Melandry Shrine. Yeah, it's definitely interesting when you have things like this as like techniques for ways of people to be able to do this. Like I said, this is not the most exciting or interesting way of doing it, but again, if you are struggling with trying to get masters on this, you can use this technique. Okay, whatever is there at the Melander Shrine, just like they're not very good at clearing that one long term for some reason. The other ones they have, and I don't know what the difference is. They've not been taking any damage or anything. So. Uh, the Lissa one gives us plus 10 maximum energy, and Hex is, Hex is ending on us 20% more quickly, which is nice. I assume that means they have 80% duration. It's a very useful effect. Uh, and then this one should be... Oh yeah, also Assassin of Lissa. Assassins are connected to Lissa. All of my attributes are raised by one. I guess Grunt is the last one. So I get 16 Dagger Mastery now. 14 Critical Strikes. Exciting. Uh, but that one's getting reclaimed, so I just lost that. Probably I'm close enough to have those enemies activated or something. I don't know exactly what's going on over here. This is mechanically very weird. Off-compass stuff can be very strange sometimes. Uh, and Grenth gives us three health steal when we hit foes and making conditions end more quickly on upon us. Now they should all run back to me. Like, I've done the bonus now. I've rallied the all the avatars, or the, the requirements for the master reward. Hey, Cormier. How are you doing? Gather your strength, Gerudo Senso. Our time of reckoning approaches. Yeah. Oh. Uh, my heroes are appearing over here for some reason. So that's fun. Now let's just go in and assume Herda and Menlo can be recovered somehow. Uh, yeah. Try to send them more centrally. I don't know where they are at the moment. Okay, they are coming over there. Uh, Lich, you're not bugging out and not becoming an enemy, are you? I need you to become aggressive. I wonder if I've bugged it out somehow. That would be unfortunate if I have somehow done so. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't actually clear out any of the enemies. It just activates the shrines through sheer numbers. Hey, he's worth 100 gold. Uh, Undead Lich? I don't don't suppose you feel like fighting me. Okay, whatever. You know what? You just stand there. Uh, this might be a reason to not do that thing. I'll just go clear the shrines of everything. Because... Why not? Uh, you know what? I bet Shiro activating there bugged everything out. And failed to advance things for the Lich. Interesting. I wonder if killing him may have compromised that from working. I'm going to go back towards the entrance and see if I can rejigger it. It's possible something weird has happened. It's possible I'll have to do this whole thing again. Only 25 minutes into it. If so, I won't be attempting this technique again. How do 
you have your trigger set up, Arena Matt? Again, it's possible because Shiro became aggressive to us asynchronously to the Lich that the whole thing is just like messed up and can't be finished now. So I'm going to check to see if it says anything about the Gate of Madness. Uh, notes. Bug, Undead Lich occasionally stays an ally. Uh, interesting. I see. Okay. Sounds like there's a couple of bugs. Seems like I've walked into a bug, most likely. So the Undead Lich is probably just always going to just stay an ally, and there's just probably a bug here that's going to prevent me from being able to fight him. He's just going to he's just going to idle there. I'm going to take a moment to go over here and look at the statue of Abaddon. Then I'm just going to have to restart the mission and do it from the beginning, which is unfortunate, but here we are. Um. Oh, and so it came to pass that Jadoth, being persecuted by the horrific forgotten armies and hounded from his home, did seek refuge amongst the cooling mists of the Crystal Sea. Until the weeks passed as Jadoth huddled in his sanctuary with nothing to see save the endless ripples of the boundless ocean. On the 51st day of his exodus, a frightful sight manifested before Jadoth's eyes the unmistakable shape of forgotten warships upon the horizon's shimmering edge. And prayed Jadoth, Abaddon, Lord of the Everlasting Depths, Keeper of Secrets, open mine eyes and bestow upon me the knowledge of the abyss, that I might smite mine enemies and send them to the watery depths. An unsettling silence swept across the waves. The twilight sky shattered and stars streaked down upon the forgotten armada. The seas boiled and ruptured, giving birth to a maelstrom from which not even light could escape, transforming the sky above into a midnight void. And thus was magic gifted to Jadoth, chosen of Abaddon, the first of the Marganites. Scriptures of Abaddon, one year before the exile. There's no actual statue here, though, you'll notice. So, that's interesting. And this is a, um, a grim monolith in shattered, fractured form. So that's kind of cool, too. Uh, unfortunately, this is bugged, so I have to restart it. There's no two ways around that, unfortunately. Um, just how it how it is. Alas. Uh, have these wood planks and. You know what? Yeah, just whatever. I'm going to sell this Marganite mask. It's probably worth more salvage, but I don't feel like going through that. Norga probably would be better off with a different elite as well. Uh, he's kind of specced for energy drain. Is the thing. I don't know. I'll leave him that way. I'll leave him that way. I'm, I won't won't worry about it much. Uh, let's just let's just do this again. I want to get this done today because I don't want to have to worry about it next time. So we're just gonna go long. We're gonna just do an entire thirty minute mission again. Such is life. It's really annoying when it's due to a bug like that, but I think the bug was partially induced by my going in early, and there's just not a whole lot I can do about that fact, except not do it again to try to avoid the bug. I do have this major vigor I can use when this guy gets his next set of armor. Okay. Got ages off. Get some of these dudes out of my back line. Well, there is another route that I can take, so maybe I'll do that. Oh. But it required me to go literally over here. I think that's blocked off. 
Yeah, okay, so they kind of force you around by blocking off parts of the geometry. That's what's going on. You could go around the long way as well and just skip the area in the middle. You may do that. Where do you think you're going? I believe Jadoth, for what it's worth, is actually findable in the game in the Domain of Anguish. I don't know what they're attempting to do there. Maybe they want to replace Cormier with um, Malix or something. Yes, yes, I see, I see. You know what? Maybe Norgun does need all the energy he can get. I mean, none of his skills cost five energy except for two. His bar is expensive, that's my point. Uh, I could just go around the outside edge. I don't think I want to. I'm just going to go through a couple of titans. This is going to be how it is. Hey, titan! And then we get the ever-obnoxious Madness Titans. Well, that one's going to cast itself to death, so that's nice. Yes, remove their enchantments, Morgu. Remove them. Spam your enchantments, Titan, and kill yourself with the backfire. The Bipper really does help with uh, energy in here. And even with that, I have additional energy management that's probably warranted. Ah, oh, Titans. These guys are so obnoxious. All right, that's one down to Madness Titans, and then some Madness Titans. Like, the Madness Titans aren't too terribly dangerous, but they are so deeply obnoxious. Yes, attack me. Behold the fury of uh, my flashing blades. This is just while you're attacking, it works by the way, so you can totally use this with other things. It just happens to be in Dagger Mastery, so... Let's just say you're encouraged to use daggers pretty strongly by attribute stuff. Uh, there is an Elementalist boss over there if you wanted to fight an Elementalist boss for some random reason. Just pointing that out for people who may not know. Probably has invoked lightning. I do not care about your lightning reflexes. Yeah. Okay. But we're gonna need to go fight these guys now. Yep. 
Back here. Where do you think you're going? Ugh. Slightly too slow on killing Blades of Corruption and get spammed by, like, swarmed by them. It's an interesting skill, though. It's like, it takes double damage, but if you don't kill it during that time, then you have more to worry about. I don't dislike the design of that skill. I think it's a clever way of kind of encouraging you to make sure you're actually finishing off enemies in a reasonable manner and not, like, skipping around. Which can be very easy to do. Hey, one nerd girl. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to uh, the raid. Hope you are all doing well today. So what were you up to? Hey, Nova. <laughs> also, I apologize in advance if Mubot gets a little over the top. He, it, it does sometimes do that. Welcome, everybody. Hello, DC Mikey MB. Welcome. Just working on trying to finish up Nightfall on this character here. As long as the Lich agrees to get killed this time. For some reason he decided, no, I don't feel like dying. I don't feel like becoming your enemy here. Just gonna, just gonna chill with you. I am... Yeah, yeah. So this is the Gate of Madness. I'm in the Realm of Format now. And Elias is apparently having a very bad day, as this is want. Yeah, this is actually the second to last mission of Nightfall. Yeah. Okay. Format Claw. No. No Tormented Slashes for you. Aha! Well, thank you, Nova Mara. I appreciate it. Hmm. You're Sh Shiro Tagachi, taunting me. You are fools to come here. What can mere mortals do against the power of a god? No matter. Your journey ends here. My Shirokin shall welcome you to this holy place and entomb you within its walls. I mean... It will certainly try. Uh, Elementalist is the top priority here. And lost half of its HP right off the bat, which is cool. Sientir. I pronounce it Sientir. Thank you for asking, one nerd girl. It is very, like, it's very unique. The closest thing to it is a typo of a Spanish word, I think. Yeah, that is actually a way of thinking of it. For sure. It was just... It came from, interestingly enough, a uh, role-playing thread on a now-defunct StarCraft or, like, Blizzard fan forum. So... That's a long time ago now, but uh, kind of a StarCraft adjacent roleplay. Warboards.org. Gone now. And the Undead Lich says, You may well be impressed with yourselves to have made it this far, but do not expect me to be as friendly as that Canthan bodyguard. Your presence is an affront to this temple's Marganite worshippers. You shall be greeted with open claws and show no remorse in their house. In the unlikely event that you survive their wrath, I shall be waiting. Yeah, I actually learned about Guild Wars from uh, a friend that I made at that forum, though. I'm being a little cautious here because these there's a lot of patrolling groups. And I'd rather not get caught blindsided by one of them. You know what? Just, just come over here. But yeah, it was... For those who are familiar with Guild Wars 1, uh, it was... The the friend had seen the uh, Althea's actor stage 
in post steering and was like, this game is awesome. She told me about it. And, uh, and I got it. Based on that word of mouth. I've been a huge fan of it ever since. Alright. Uh, let's make sure I'm not over aggroing here. Okay, cool. These guys are running forward. I will gladly welcome them. With my daggers, as you do. Need to wait for that recharge. Yeah. And so somebody that I met through modding StarCraft 1, of all things. I really like the modding suite that the fan base made for StarCraft 1. That was a pretty sweet mod set. Learned a lot of random things doing that. A very particular way of setting stuff up. It was a long time ago. Back in the early mid 2000s. Mmm. Cool. Yeah, I've played the game a lot more than the friend who introduced it to me did. A lot more. Uh, Armageddon Lord, are you gonna come over here? Because that would be nice. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how that happens? I remember getting into Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon series, through the card game because I had friends that got the cards, and were like, and I was like, you know, you know, what? I'm not that interested, but I'll go ahead and get this to be able to play with them. And I got way more into Pokemon than them too, I think. Hmm. More hands. Couple fists. Uh, let's take a moment to salvage a few things. Wood! My nemesis! Okay, I have too much iron. This commendation's worth a little bit more, I guess. Uh, all right. Well, let's see about taking out this next group of portal wraiths. Where's this group of Marganites going? I'm keeping an eye on my mini-map pretty tightly here because I don't want to get surprised by an ambush. Actually, let's do something about this fellow. Ah, corruption. It's one of those moments where I'm a bit more engaged with uh, what's going on. It makes it hard to reach out. Okay, took out that portal. That's good news. Hmm. So what is... What is Stream Raiders? I'm not familiar with it. it sounds like something to do with raiding streams, but... There's still a lot for me to learn about streaming. I'm not much for doing research, as it turns out. Okay, come on over here. Ow. It'll invoke lightning. Okay, we should be able to clear this group out pretty swiftly, looks like. And then take out these portal rates, so that'll be good. I don't know. Mm. I see. Let's see, 
how these guys break up. Okay, time to fight some Titan Abominations. I think we got the Portal Wraith's attention too, which is not ideal here. You only have to put up one unit and your viewer can add more over time. A span of half an hour. Hmm. And then they um, battle each other somehow, I assume, right? Or are they, like, cooperative against something? Gotcha. There we go. Finally got through the block. These things love to block you. This is their favorite pastime. Ah. Interrupt spammer got interrupted. Okay, gotcha. Hey, I got lines to comfort. That's kind of nice. The demonic relic. Hmm. That's kind of a neat idea. Okay, good. We got those cleared out. Let's go Azizabe. Yeah, it's a nice little way of like adding a little bit more interaction. Which is cool to do. Okay. Now, what I want to do here... Uh, I don't actually need that. Uh, they did not wear me out, you'll be pleased to know. I will send all my dudes over this way, though. Yeah. But it's cool that they have, like, that people have tried to figure out ways of, like, okay, how do we add a little bit to it for various streams? Yeah, sure, that makes sense. Let's try to take out these Marganite Foe Masters. We actually had a really easy time against Cheeto last time, so let's just try to repeat that. Because I can just take him out now, and then just have the Lich left, and just not kill the Lich. That sounds good. Also, Cheeto can just, like, bug out and stand here. That works for me, too. Well, he can attack me and take more damage. I'm cool with, I'm cool with both of these things. Hmm. Ah. Yeah. Were you the one who was interested in my Hollow Knight playthrough? I remember there was a viewer who did. I can't necessarily remember everything that a viewer mentions. Um... I don't particularly f uh, fear your powers, Undead Lich. Just have to be honest here. You are not terribly threatening. Cheeto's the really threatening one of the two. Yeah, Hollow Knight is great. I'm looking forward to Silk Song. I'm also really looking forward to uh, to Hyrule uh, Warriors Age of Calamity that they announced like yesterday. That has me psyched. Excited. Interesting little tile floor pattern. But yeah, with how competent Team Cherry was with Hollow Knight, it's like, oh man, these people know what they're doing. 
The next one's going to be great, too. I do think I can win on Dead Lich. I've already taken out Shido, and he's the, the threat. You're just kind of the nuisance. Now we just need to go over this way, everyone. Stop worrying about him. He's not the problem. He's not the, the goal right now. Uh, up this way, it looks like. Oh, Elias died. Oh, I see what's happened. Heroes have gotten body blocked on the Lich. So that's not good. Mm. All the way to the light, eh? Yeah, I never did, like... Let's just say the uh, the top end of that game was a little little bit much for me. Oh man, faint hardness makes me feel so sluggish. We capture that. Sure we did. No, we did not. Okay. Yeah, I've gotten the basic ending of Hollow Knight. Um oh. Elias clearly rezzed with that. Okay, this is a problem that I'm having where everybody's getting trapped on stuff and it is not great. I have fought the Radiance. Um, I got absolutely crushed every time. But I have, I have gotten far enough to fight it. I didn't find the fight particularly enjoyable, but I have gotten far enough to do so. I like a certain amount of challenge. That's just like, that was too much for me. Okay, come up here, please. Because, yeah, that is... A serious, serious fight. Okay. There we go. We violate all the avatars. We can go after the Lich. He's going to go down pretty quickly at this point. There we go. Gods, we beseech you, hear our prayers. We have come where living men should not be. We have fought armies, crossed wastelands, and conquered demons. Now we are in the heart of torment. We must destroy Abaddon before he destroys the world. But we cannot battle him alone. You are not alone. The gods are always watching. Watching? We need your help. We are only mortals and challenge a god. There was a time when the gods walked the earth. Every thought and achievement was a gift of the gods. But now you must realize that our gifts are within you. Duena lives in your compassion. Balthazar in your strength. Melandru dwells in your harmony. Grenth in your justice. 
And in your inspiration, Lissa is there. The divinity is within you. And so we give you our blessing. That should suffice for the task ahead. And to you, Cormir, a most special gift. This is your world now. This is your decision. You must make a choice that a mortal could make. Our decision? They leave us some words of encouragement and expect us to fight a god? The gods said we have a choice. A choice that only a mortal could make. Yes. Yes, there is a choice. We can end this. We don't have to be driven by gods and their avatars. Let us go. Ooh. Okay, got through there. Uh, with a bunch of stuff I need to process. Hang on. Where's the best place to take care of loot? Excessive quantities of loot. Let's go, just go to the Kodish Bazaar. Quick stop in the Kodish Bazaar, and then we'll go finish this thing. Where's the Kodish Bazaar? Here it is. Just over this way to the merchant to sell some wood. And salvage these things. That is an interesting path you took around there, but sure. I uh, have some wooden planks. Thank you. Hey, tan hide from that one. Yes, split off one of those. Heh. Yeah, I'll be calling it a day pretty soon here myself, actually. Uh, I just want to finish this, like, last thing and have a little bit of, uh... A little bit of a, uh... That's the right term moment to like wrap stuff up finally access the shun lie on this guy because slow playthrough stuff for him is going to be done it would be nice if it could wouldn't it that is not how things work uh i'll be streaming next on saturday Uh, the VOD does go up tomorrow in about 27 hours. The VOD will be going up. You're supposed to give some amount of time for things, so I do. Because that's uh, Twitch policy if you have a thing. This is not going to do anything here. And this is not going to do anything here. Uh, let's just change a few skills around. I'm just going to give him some lifesteal, I think, probably. I have some lifesteal, right? Yeah, I have shadow strike. Uh, this also won't do a whole lot, but I'll leave it here because I don't feel like trying to change things around. And I guess, technically, this is a skill. Sure. Um, this is probably fine, frankly. That's probably fine. I'll probably have some condition issues. <laughs> I so I actually this is this will be my second time in this stream, uh, fighting or doing this fight, and I definitely did the dance in the first one. Probably won't in this one. Just for the sake of, uh, expediency, but I don't know what this last skill to be. Maybe Shadow Sanctuary would be a good one. There. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go end this, go end this thing, eh? Like, because if I do the dance and I have to enter the mission in again, it's a whole thing. It's fun, though. I appreciate that they added that e Easter egg in. Oh, 
Hopefully energy goes okay. Uh, I guess order is only helping me in Sokolon, but... I don't know. Feel, felt like better than nothing. All our efforts and sacrifices have brought us to this point. Boy, that goes really quickly. It is a great Easter egg. Uh, yeah, she says some stuff. All our efforts and sacrifices have brought us to this point. Now is the time for heroes. Prepare yourselves. Today, we end this nightmare once and for all. Remember, we fight together, and not just for our own lives, but for the life of every man, woman, and child in Ilona. For all the people of the world. We cannot fail. We shall not fail. March forth to victory, Sun Spears. For Easton, for Lona, for the five true gods. Excitement. Yeah, I wonder what the very first person to experience it that wasn't an ArenaNet developer, obviously, uh, thought. Oh, get out of here, Torment Claw. <laughs> yeah, I bet. It's the sort of thing that makes a lasting impression. Like, this did what now? You were waiting. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're just like, well, I got nothing else to do. I guess I'll just dance. And then Abaddon served you. Have a nice tall glass of death. Oh, man, yeah. And then you had to do it again for your friend when your friend got back, I assume. How much damage can I pump into Abaddon at this moment? with me on this one. You could not come to this me as well. How's that sound? Heh. <laughs> well, there you go. And then had fun. Like, oh, that just happens. Wow. I have plus nine health regen, and that still wasn't enough. I mean, did good damage to Abaddon, so that's something. These Torment Claws are wrecking us, though. Hehe. <laughs> And did. This is the important part there. And Norgu just degens to death because I guess Menlo was having an off day. M Menlo, what are you even doing? Yes, that is what you're doing. You're using Word of Healing. Uh, I'll probably, like, if I wipe here somehow, I'm going to drop Menlo for Dunkoro and stuff. Okay, is Abaddon vulnerable right now? Oh, of course he is. Well, we just missed that cycle. Unless the game is feeling very generous. Ha! Was not feeling that generous. part of what's happening here. 
Okay, yeah, this explains a lot. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Graven Monoliths use a skill that disables your elite skill for, like, a period of time. I'm just going to reset this. Um, I'm just going to reset this. So, I'm what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kick Menlo. And I'm going to kick Elias. I'm going to add Eve. Um, and I'm going to add Dunkoro. What's happening here is I don't have... So I'm, I'm playing with certain restrictions, and one of them is that these are the skills that I can use on my heroes, is the list in here. I don't have Blood Ritual in here. Eve has Blood Ritual, so I'm kind of getting around the lack of Blood Ritual by using Eve. What's happening is Elias is not able to use Blood as power because it's getting disabled uh, repeatedly by the... Um, let's see. I only have one res chant. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to switch Norgu over to res sig anyway. Because um, the signet, we get so many morale boosts here, the signet's good. Uh, I have res chant here just because it works well with Hero's Boon. Um, but what's happening is he's not able to actually use blood as power because it keeps getting disabled by signet of humility. And so my party is like running out of energy really badly and things like that. Um, I don't think Shield of Regeneration is doing much here, so I'm going to drop it off of her in favor of, frankly, I'm just going to go, um, Signet of Removal, maybe? Yeah, Signet of Removal. It helps clean stuff up. It's going to be using stuff. Um, Norgu's bar is very expensive, and I'd like to cheapen it somehow. I could give him Hexbreaker. I don't think I need Backfire. Um, I might just give him Mind Rack instead. Or, or, no, go with me on this, Power Spike. Yeah, that'll help. That'll help and reduce energy costs, which is the important part here. Uh, Mirror of Disenchantment's not going to do a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of enchantments. Signet of Disruption. I'm going to replace Mirror of Disenchantment with Signet of Disruption. Just give him a little bit more interrupting power. Or, actually, you know what? No. Uh, Hex Eater Signet might be a better idea. I think I'll go with that instead. Yeah, that'll that'll help with more stuff. Yeah, because there's a lot of hexes, so I'm happy to have that. I just need some protection. He's gonna be able to do most of the lifting. Healer's boon is less vulnerable to the disabling skill. Yeah, I think this is probably fine. She maybe doesn't need Glyph of Lesser Energy because this bar is way less in energy. Okay. You can take care of Nova Mara. That's fine. Reverse Hex. It's the opposite of what would be useful here. Okay. Well, I if you go to my uh, Discord, I am sending out little notifications whenever the stream starts. So, that or following the channel, which I think you probably already do. All sorts of ways to get notified when I go live. Okay, let's try this. Um, I think this will probably help. Alrighty. Yeah. I was pretty confident you had, because y your name's been around. I've seen you around. You're familiar. That's fair. That's a good reason for not knowing. Okay. So that went wrong because I was relying on a bip that never bipped because Signet of Humility kept disabling it. Oh ho! I've been running the game long enough that the visual effect for this, this texture is no longer animating. 
That's the thing that happens sometimes is the textures, like the animations and stuff will bug out. They did some fix a while back to try to repair that to an extent. It was not 100% successful, obviously, because uh, that still happens. Oh, and I am lag spiking. This next ping is going to be something. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Everybody's here. What? Wow, Abaddon, you have some serious reach, bud. Okay, good night. You take care. Okay, other Graven Monolith. Time for me to fight you. And now time to go after the ones in the middle. Someday when I get there. And this will make Abaddon vulnerable. He's already lost some health. I'm not quite sure why. I think that might just be the effect of activating the things, though. Okay, let's pull back over to here. Yeah, definitely the BIP not being able to BIP severely compromises a team that's relying on it to offset cost of skills. I don't know why I use that. Okay. Stop. Stop being body blocked and doing nothing. Wow. Okay. So what just happened there is I was telling my heroes to path over to here, where I had a flag set up. Unfortunately, uh, they could not path there, where a flag was set up. Um, wow, this is really, really silly. Okay. Uh... Yeah, okay, we just wiped. Okay, so what happened is, just to kind of explain what just happened there. I was telling my heroes to path here because I don't want them to bother fighting these monoliths because they'll just respawn. It, it doesn't accomplish anything. So I needed to get them out of that area to go fight things over here. But what happened is a, grim, a graven monolith was in the way. The heroes didn't try to path around it. A torment claw popped up and then used its AoE attack to just, like, absolutely just destroy my entire team. Uh, and that was me not realizing that they'd gotten body blocked until too late. I canceled the flag, but by that point in time, the damage was already done. Um, boy, this is going a lot. Usually, this is not as difficult as, as it has been being today. I am going especially long, by the way. If anybody is curious, I normally would have finished over an hour ago. But I really want to get this done today. So, here we are. Pushing on. Trying to not wipe here too much. Wondering if I'll get a white die drop from Abaddon so that way I can complete my collection. I guess I'm also missing purple. It's like one of almost every die dropped for this character. Because, of course, I haven't gone to the uh, the Shunlai yet on this character. Once I do, I'll be able to get these runes out, and that'll be nice. Okay, let's try to finish this thing. Super long fight stream. Long stream where I fight Abaddon twice on two different characters. Uh, okay, that one's down. That one's down. Let's go to the middle. I'm using skills so I get the stuff I need. Okay, now we can go fight Abaddon. 
Or we'll get knocked down and dazed, and then we can fight Abaddon. You know, however this whole mess works. I wonder what killing a fallen god does for a uh, an assassin's resume. Oh, that just strips all your enchantments off. Okay. Wow, okay, I'm getting absolutely wrecked by clumsiness spam. Yeah, these guys followed us from the middle. They are not what's important right now. Yeah, and then they use the uh, Signet of Humility on me. But at least Uncor is able to keep his healer beams. His healer's boom pop, which is helpful. This is the part where I tell him to heal party because we need it badly. Wow, okay. Oh, Torment Claw. Again, if I'm not specifically telling the AI to take care of Torment Claws by fighting them, they tend to do a very bad job of doing so. Um. Oh. There we go. And then he likes to use Words of Madness there, which is the thing that knocks us down. And dazes everyone, which is kind of a big deal. Okay. Got him to 50%. that second of humility again. Okay, I can slow that down. I get some knockdowns. And the daze. This is a lot easier to deal with if you have a good way of dealing with the daze, my goodness. don't really matter much right now, but... Okay. So much clumsiness spam. This is one of those spots where it's really nice to be a little bit more generic of how your character works. Assassins have very specific attack patterns that are notably vulnerable to clumsiness type effects. Yeah, and then my entire team is dazed, which makes it hard for them to do stuff. Like, fortunately, you get so many morale boosts here that rest sticks are highly effective, but... We have restoration. Well, I can trigger that one. I can try to, anyway. A couple of Graven, Graven Monoliths is not a big deal, but it's everything else that's happening in my team that is... This would be helped a lot by having stuff to help remove the mass days from everybody. This is a spot where it'd be a good idea to bring Cautery Signet. This, like, this went a lot easier on Imrahil because Imrahil has Cautery Signet. It's really all it comes down to. Oh my goodness. 
this. Can we please get knocked down less. back to here. Let's just pull straight back. Like, we've almost worn him down, but... can't see it underneath Norgu, but we keep getting hit by words of madness, uh, which is a very obnoxious spell, skill thing, that has a lot of knockdown associated with it, which is why I'm having so much difficulty here. Well, at least the monks have good uh, stuff going on with them. Okay, we need to take this thing down before it starts wrecking my party any more than my party's already getting wrecked by things. Alright, hopefully this will be the... I keep forgetting he always does that the moment you get close to him and having my very first attempts to attack him interrupted. There we go. Finally. Whew. That was rough. Abaddon? No. His power, his knowledge, but not him. His will is broken. There is a new god of secrets. There is a new day. Nightfall has come and gone. I have much to do. Much must be repaired. This will take you home, or to wherever you desire. Cormir, if you need help... Yes. Yes, I will. But for the moment, you have your world back. The gods spoke the truth. It is your world. Use it wisely. Of course. And remember, my friend. You never fight alone. How was that still a master's reward? I think that actually went faster than it did at Emory Hill. Emory Hill had a smoother time. Like, I only had to take one try at it. Uh, but I think that was faster uh, because it took fewer rounds. But it was a heck of a lot smoother on, uh, on Emory Hill. Stop for a moment, Kirudo Sanso. Inhale the air of your victory. On this day, you have done something greater than mortal men. You have ended the insanity of a god. 
and created a new god, something that has not happened since ancient times. I can't imagine what would have happened to Alona if you hadn't been here, Gerudo Senso. I can. It mostly revolves around fire and pain, and the city is filled with zombies. Oh, Sin. That's enough, Sin. Actually, Sin, I thought it was rather delightful. Ilona has a chance at a new life, and that is more than we mortals are given. For Mira's new diver divinity is a blessing. Those she loves will be forever safe. I wish I could be so fortunate. But we should head back to Asklon. Peace is boring. Ilona still has trouble, Sin. They still need heroes. But I think Gerudo Senso can handle it from here. Devona is right. The future of Ilona is in your hands, Gerudo Senso. Come, my friends. Let us return home. That actually would be a really good way to wrap things up if they did do kind of the thing that I was talking about, about splitting, like making it a trilogy that then kind of separates off. The end of the world business is really important in life. Uh, I kind of want to see what these guys say. I thought the gods gave us pain to show us we are strong. But I was wrong. They give us pain so we can see that heroes like you still walk in our midst. You did things I could never have done. I can only hope to live up to you, Great One. The trumpets and Vobby sound your victory, and all of Easton rejoices at your safe return. This is the day of your destiny, the day when you stand among heroes and kings and know that you are their equal. Seize the moment, my friend. The day is yours. And here we get to see the quests that the other choices give us. Hi, my friend. We've traveled the whole continent together, and even a fought a god. I bet now you're grateful that you took me along with you. You couldn't have done it without all costs. Sorry about someone's shaking there. Rearranged my legs. Bump on the desk by accident. I believe that Melandre's hand guided me to your side. Through you, Istan and his people were saved. Thank you for all that you have done. You're welcome, Milani. We talked with them earlier on Emmer Hill, so if you're curious about what they say, you can check out the VOD. Uh, Master of Whispers says, Hi, Gerudo Senso. I must apologize for all my manipulations. While I have not been part of your group, I have been watching your operation, assisting behind the scenes as much as I can. Now that we have achieved a large measure of success, I wish to come out of the shadows and work by your side. Ask but one favor. Can you carry a message to my men, telling them we were successful? I will deliver your message. It's good to know you were an ally all along. And of course, Acolyte Jin. Good day, noble hero. Your deeds prove that you possess great honor and a commitment to the good of the nation. I too revere these things. Let me serve you, and I will bring honor to your house. Will you accept my sword, or bow, or whatever? If you do, please tell General Hayao so he may write your name into the scrolls of our people. It would be my honor. And here we have Talcora, Gorn, and Norgu. The Vobians. Are you really going to travel the world with us, Talcora? I thought when all this was over, you'd head back home to be a princess. I'm not cut out to be a princess. And besides, a lot of people out here need heroes. Now that I really am one, I'm going to do my best for them. We'd be ever so very happy to have you along, dear maiden. But are you certain of this decision? The world is a very big place. And you're a very small girl, after all. I'm sure. This is what's right for me. I can feel it. The world is calling my name, and I'm not afraid to answer. Not anymore. I'm glad, Talcora. But don't forget about Vobby. It'll be waiting to welcome you home. Someday. Hello, Gorin. I'd like to fight alongside you. You being a great hero and all. I used to work for Prince Baka, and then I did some freelance bodyguarding... But here's the thing. I ran up some, um, expenses while I was in Baka's service. Hey, Prince Baka owes you a favor. You could ask him to forgive my debt, and then I could do stuff for you. I'd love to have you working with us. I'll talk to Baka and see what I can do about that debt. Alrighty. So that's some quests to get them. Zenmai and Elias joined me on this character. That also helped, actually. 
When I served Korna, you were my enemy. Um, Grunth opens his arms and welcomes into his grasp the souls of those who oppose you. You'll be busy for a while, I think. To be Mozing is to be without a master, and to be alone. I am Mozing no more. I will follow you from this day forward. And then these joyous souls bow. The keeper of armor I can talk to. Uh, oh, does okay. Primeval armor. So there's Vobian and Ancient, but not Primeval for all of them. Just for the eight of this campaign. Okay. For some reason, I was thinking there there is Primeval here, but I guess not. That's okay. Uh, and then there's those weapons. The keeper of secrets will, of course, give me a book of secrets. You have done that which even the five gods were unable to do. For that, you shall be rewarded. Please, take this book of secrets. Present it to any of the keepers you see here, and they will reward you. I already looked at all of these guys um, earlier, so I'm going to take some of these daggers. Uh, I kind of think I'm going to go for the split chakrams of the, f of the Forgotten. They're all identical. They're all 15 over 50 zealous plus 30 HP daggers. I think I like the Split Chakrams skin here, so I'm going to grab them. And now I have some daggers that don't give me minus 5 energy. Uh, although I'll need to customize them before they're truly useful. All right. The end credits will play, but we have a few things I want to wrap up with, so let's go ahead and just talk to Volitus. Watch this cutscene. Uh, I really like what they do with this cutscene. I think it's a really great way to wrap stuff up. So we will go back to Commodon. And then do a few things and wrap up these extremely long stream that's gone over by like an hour and a half. Um, yeah. Let's watch this cutscene again, because I like it. Ilona, land of the golden sun. A land of wealth and bounty. A land of heroes. A land protected by its champions. General Morgan becoming a sun spear. A shadow fell upon this land once. Is what I interpret that as. The shadow of an ancient and forgotten darkness. Night fell, and the time of the five gods ended. Yet after every night comes a new dawn of a new day. And a time for new heroes. In Ilona, the land of the golden sun. I really like that cutscene. I'd like to actually watch that one back to back with the um the cutscene that uh brain work. Streams have been too long. My brain can't work anymore. The the opening cutscene. I think that would be really interesting. Uh, okay. So this character has done what I'm going to do slow playthrough style for him. So I'm going to unlock my shooting line now. Yes. Uh, review available upgrades. Crafting and material storage. Get that too. Thank you. Okay. Now I can uh, free up immeasurable quantities of inventory space by dropping things off. Like this fur that I've had for I don't even know how long. Jade, amber, silk, bunches of iron and plant fibers. and Oh, I'm going to have a lot more stuff to do to clean all this up, let me tell you. Yeah, because I'm like maxing out so much material storage. Okay, well, I'll be worrying about that more at a different point. For now, I want to drop off all these dyes where I keep my dyes and turn this chunk of drake flesh into a drake kebab for future purposes. So much dye. But yeah, and I have this leather as well. And these imperial commendations I can drop off, which is most welcome. I'm going to keep my stock high, after all. And talk to the chef. Exchange here. 
This can be dropped off. The honeycombs can be dropped off. Oh, it's a wondrous day. A wondrous day of opening up storage space. I'm just looking to see if there's any blue drink hanging around. There's not. I didn't think so. Okay. Well, I've got a lot more inventory space available to me now uh, that I'm no longer cluttering it up with all of those things. And that feels really good. Okay, let's go get these customized, shall we? That's over on the other side of the thing here. And I will have my, uh, my split chakrams, which I'm really happy about. I will say, Kenshi's butterfly daggers have done very well for me uh, on this character. I really didn't like the minus five maximum energy, but I can't deny that I was really happy to have Zealous Daggers. So. All right, and this character got up to 25 platinum. That's pretty cool, too. I'll leave it on him for now. All right, so that's going to go ahead and wrap stuff up here uh, for me for today. Uh, the next stream is Saturday, as I mentioned previously. I will probably be spending some time on Imrahil Argentum and uh, taking care of business on him, specifically uh, quests that I didn't finish because I really wanted to open up some of the restrictions. So that will be what's going on next time, uh, I think, most likely. Uh, and that will be Saturday. And that'll that's it. 11 a.m. PDT, uh, Pacific Daylight Time. That's GMT minus 7. Schedule stuff, all that down below. Uh, you can follow the stream, get notified when I go live, you can join the Discord that I linked earlier, uh, or find the link below. All that good stuff. VODs will go up on YouTube later if you want to catch them. You're also just welcome to watch them here on Twitch. And, um, yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Till next time, everyone. Take care. And goodbye.